Welcome everyone back into Conquerors of Nolan. This time around with Team Yellow who surprise surprise also went on to do their own endeavors for quite a while after coming to the city of redemption and partaking in several small missions and tasks here and there managing to accrue enough renown to join the adventurers guild in redemption the god slayers guild run by a tiger folk by the name of anthony eventually this group of adventurers decided to follow their own pursuits for a while quite a while even where in they did accrue more renown and equipment and a better sense of cohesion between the three of them the mismatched mavericks then the guild leader Anthony asked them to go to the Shadowfell and possibly probably risk their lives to make the guild more prepared to go into the hells themselves to into Nifl Doom. As it happens, there are fiends and demons invading the mortal material realm world plane and terrorizing everyone. They need to stop these incursions from happening and the only way to do that is to strike at the source of this fiendish invasion. However, the way to the hells is a one way only. And they can't just send adventurers and heroes to their dooms, they need a way to return. And the way to return, that they don't quite yet have, they believe is in other planes, such as the Shadowfell and the Feywild. So they have been sending teams into those planes to try and retrieve equipment and whatever magical items they can find to help the guild in this endeavor. Thusly, they have recruited the three of you, Ander, Drakdaring, and Stormclimb, to go into the Shadowfell and retrieve some sort of equipment or magical item that allows for easier transportation. They want to study its magic and harness it into other such items and belongings. What they have done then is brought you into the cemetery in the sacred grove and redemption. And at night, after the sun set, told you to lay in the coffin, which you did. And as soon as the coffin lid was closed, you found out that once you open it again, you are no longer in the material plane, but rather in a plane of shadows and negative energy. You were in the shadow fell. After traveling southwards, for what felt like an eternity, encountering all manner of problems and challenges, and challenges, obstacles and ill things, <clears throat> you finally made your way to a windmill. Once upon there, you looted everything that you could find since that was your goal after all. After picking up everything you could find in the darkened windmill and leaving it, you came to face with a red frog-like creature that immediately decided to attack you. After fighting, this creature, which you st still don't quite know what it is, you managed to defeat it, just barely, and after doing so, you realize that this creature was probably responsible for killing the previous adventurers sent here into the Shadowfell to retrieve these magical items you are after. 
And that is where we left off. So, Ander, Trek Daring, Storm Climb. The three of you lay in front of a windmill in this desolate plain that is a Shadowfell after having defeated this gigantic red frog like creature. All of you somewhat harrowed from the fight, but still hanging in there quite nicely. You believe you have what you need to have, and as you look around, what do you do? So I would like to drink my potion of healing. I'm going to take my time with it so I can get the max healing points, since that's part of your homebrew if I remember correctly. Yep, so you recover 10 hit points from your potion of healing. I would like to uh, try and take one of the larger teeth from this beast that we felled. <laughs> All right, make case. Uh, are you proficient in Arcana? Absolutely not. Then make a survival check with a higher DC. Awesome. Well, I mean, like he tried to do that last time, and he got a twenty, and that's how he found that. I got a hand last time. <laughs> a hand with a, an artifact attached to it. Oh, so you which... uh, you already did this roll then? Well, that was yeah. when I was just looking in its mouth trying to get a tooth and you were like, Oh, hey, by the way, there's a chick's arm in here. Okay, then never mind. You do manage to get the uh, a few teeth from this bee creature, which is just too big for you guys to even think about carrying it back. You don't even know if you wanted to carry it back. I think we don't. Mm. I mean, we could try to shove it into the bag of holding, but last time you guys said no. I don't think so. Mm. Not a good idea. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is uh, I'm going to I'm going to ask Drac, Hey Drac, can you hand me the bag of holding? I need to grab another potion. Oh well, yeah, sure, here. So yeah, as I'm reaching into the bag, I'm talking to the group and I'm saying... You know, it really sucks that we still didn't get a map from Anthony, or at least a compass. And then I feel an object in my hand, and I pull it out, and I find a compass. And I said, and I say to the group, whose is this? Well, not oh, me. That, that's mine, of course. <laughs> I just shoved in there right at the beginning of their adventure, weeks ago. You... You've, you've had a company this, all, this whole time when I asked about that? Uh, do, let me guess, did, is there... Do, do you have any other tools with for navigation? Yeah, of course, I mean... <laughs> I, I, I'm kind of good at this stuff and <laughs> I have... I have forgotten to add stuff to my list. That's what I did. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, well... Have you been... Okay, so... I'm not mad. But I am okay? <laughs> a little disappointed in you. Are you okay? So, how about... Have you at least been writing down our location, I guess? I mean, maybe you should start making a map with all that stuff you got. And I hold out the bag for Ander to pull out his cartography skill, his <laughs> cartography tools. That's what I forgot to add to the list, thank you. Uh, and well, sure. Uh, so Ander grabs the cartography tools and, and, and just goes, here, so far, uh, as he shows what he had from the material plane, uh, is scribbled, so far, everything we've been through is close to what I have uh, sketched from the town, from all the days that I've been running around the town. And uh, I, I think this is very, 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 this is looking very good for us. If we're going back through the town, I really hope we can use some of my, my notes for this. Okay, yeah, you're definitely our navigator now. So I guess make sure to 
not only update those journals, but also the map. Um, let's see. And I'm going to reach into the bag of holding again, and I'm also going to talk to Andrew. Next thing you'll tell me that you know how to sew, sew and you threw your needles in your ah! Then I pull out some sewing needles. You should not have not said that. And uh, <laughs> did you clown car the bag of holding and just throw a bunch of random shit in here? Uh, maybe. I'm impressed. Yes, I, uh, sorry. <laughs> I'm impressed. Uh, your abilities to hide things go far beyond just your physical skills. <laughs> Thanks, I guess. So I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to glare up at uh, Ander, and I'm going to say, "Just take." I grit my teeth and I say, "Just take your stuff." Okay, so I'm gonna. I don't want to accidentally think about needles again and get stabbed <laughs> when I reach into the bag of holding. Sure. So, uh, Ander reaches for the the bag of holding and goes, "Okay, so my backpack's here, and I need this stuff and get the cartography tools and sewing stuff." I shove into my own backpack, and, and sorry guys, I'll take it from here. Oh, and calligraphy. <laughs> Yeah, calligraphy tool. Sorry. What shit do you have in this bag? <laughs> what the? F oh, I don't know how much shit I have in this bag. Well, I mean that you is have... what it is for, but um. You have a lot of skills that you have been overlooking. That's that could really help our team out. Well, anyways, I'm going to. No, think of, I'm only going to think about the potion of healing this time and reach in and... Whoop. Okay, I pulled out the potion of healing and I uh, put it into my inventory. And I uh, hand back the the bag of holding back to Drac and then I say, So I guess now we gotta start heading back, huh? Yeah, we should, um, we should get out of here. I'm... I don't like this place. Neither do I, but... Now, when we're going to go back by the riverside, we're going to have to deal with that fog. It's not going to be easy. Using the ring of the ram was able to... How do I put this? It was able to disrupt that fog. But I look up to the windmill. I think I might have an idea. And so... Hey, Doug, how how tall is this windmill? Boy, I have no idea. I believe if you were <laughs> to look up and try and figure out its size, it's not impossible to guess. It does take you some time, though. Uh, but with the help of your friends, all of you... Measure this windmill to be about 15, that would be... Let me double check my math. Okay, and at this time I'm going to take out a crowbar and I said, So, I think we can use that windmill. If I, if, Drac, if you throw me up there, I could try and see if I can break off that the, the windmill blades and see if we can try and use that to swat away the fog. You're you're very monstrously strong, so I think if we just break off a blade we can you can use that to swat to swat them away. You're asking me to throw you at a windmill that we have established is made out of not windmill things. And you I mean, want the... to it was the building bleeding. is made. The, the building is made out of skin, but the blades itself is made out of bone. So, it's it's fine. Besides, I can't catch any diseases if it if there is a disease on this thing. I don't even want to think about that idea. Yeah. Uh. So just try to. Well, let's see if uh, d if if dr if Drag is actually able to throw me up there because he is proficient in rat throwing, but it's only like. 15 to 30 feet. Well, fairly certain most windmills were about 15 meters tall. 
15 to 30 meters tall. Yeah, this yeah, we'll this right, one, but, which is more like 60 to 80 feet. <laughs> yeah, this windmill it's not super tall. It's about uh, 70 feet high. That's pretty tall. <laughs> I mean, okay. So maybe instead, uh, if you're not able to throw me up there all the way, then we could try and do a a, a sort of team attack where I I ride on Ander and. Ander runs up to you, and you give Ander a big boost to jump up really high, and then you catch. I'm just gonna and try and throw you. How Ander's about that? gonna try and catch, you, and then what was it? Oh I yeah. Think, I think then the you more... drag. You're gonna catch Ander, and hopefully, uh, I'll, hopefully I'll be uh, on that windmill blade. I like the plan, but I'm just going to try and throw you. I hate the plan. So. Make sure to catch me. So, Drek Darren, you go ahead and so. pick your little friend and just decide to throw him up into the windmill <laughs> as high Aiming as you can. Aiming for a blade. Make a... Or the lowest one. Asshole. Make a strength attack. I'm gonna say that to make it, you need to roll at least 18. So, do you <laughs> want me to... Roll a d20 Retro. plus my strength plus my uh, proficiency, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a d20 strength proficiency. Uh, make just make an attack roll with storm climb throw. You don't have disadvantage because you're not trying to be super accurate. I don't think. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> well, look at that. Storm climb. You fly, and boy, <laughs> do you go very high. Uh, you are able to see the entirety <laughs> of your surrounding areas, which, uh, luckily for you, this windmill is sort of on a on on a little hill on on the steps. It's not incredibly exposed, but once you're on top of the windmill, just barely ca managing to catch onto onto the rotating axle that you do, if you will recall. It's made of bones and the and the cloth, quote unquote, that they're using for 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 the windmill is actually made of stretched skin. Being up close to it is not at all good. Nope. But what as do you see up there? as you look around, Storm Climb, make a perception check. What do my rat eyes see? Yeah, please tell me what do your rat eyes? see 11 11 that's uh do i get advantage since i'm so high up no you look around and you notice very on the verily on the distance there seems to be some buildings uh there is somewhat foggy a little bit further south and eastward yes eastward uh there seems to be some buildings, but as you look in that direction, you seem to see something that quite shakes you. Something that you were not expecting to see. You see some sort of figure watching over these buildings, looming over in the distance. Some sort of, some sort of guardian, so to speak, or some sort of reaper. It's... Hard to tell from this distance, but boy, do you see it? Um, okay, so like, how how far away is this? Because uh, like, um, plenty far. Out, like, about okay, and, about, about and I would say some three to five hundred feet away. It's on top of another hill, much further away. But still, I think the fact that I'm able to see this figure is probably very, very uh, scary because it's Concerning. probably even bigger up close, you know? It's like that Death Stranding. Okay, so I'm going to definitely. Oh, wait, can. I wonder if they can even hear me, hear my Storm speech, climb. So I guess I'm going to. What do you see? So I'm going to try and tell them about the figure and the buildings, but like, are they able to hear me? Uh, if you yell, yes. They seem to be yelling, trying to talk to you 
from the bottom where they are. Uh, okay, so does the figure react to that yelling? You can't tell for sure. Yeah, going to... I'm going to just ignore them. I mean, like, hopefully they won't shout anything again, but I'm just going to focus on identifying the windmill axle and seeing if there's any, like, weak points I can strike and then using the crowbar to pop it off. Wait. Did you fly all the way up there with a crowbar? Yeah, I told you, I grabbed a, I, I grabbed a crowbar. Okay, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, that happened. All right, fair um, enough. <laughs> Are you trying to, to kind of pull out the blades from the axle and kind of just dismantle it? Well, I know that I'm... I'm not really sure how this thing is constructed, but what I'm figuring is, like, it's... How do I put this? I figured it rather than trying to waste my time trying to knock off the the blades that are I'm not sure are spinning or not, but I feel like it's easier just to try and attack the weak points that's holding this these blades up and then push it off so that we can just break it into separate pieces because I don't know if it's attached to a ring or if it if the blades are attached attached together like a ring or if they're just like separate spokes sticking out make an investigation check storm climb i got a 14. looking around this seems somewhat rickety it's uh you get you get the sense that bone and skin is not the most durable resistant or best suited material to make a windmill but even though it works, it seems to work just barely. It would not be hard for you to break this thing down as it spins around. Okay, so I guess I break it down. Oh, but I'm definitely going to warn my friends first. Clear! Get clear! And so that <laughs> they don't have to make any dexterity saves. <laughs> and then we should run really far, really fast. Yeah. Okay. Where? <laughs> And so then I, uh, I guess I look real quick to make sure that Ander and Drac have gotten enough distance, got gotten to a safe distance, and then I start trying to pop off this, the the blades, or at least one. Sure. Uh, it takes you some time and some finagling, but you manage to jam the crowbar in there and exert all of your non-existent strength almost to push it using more so of your spirit's power than your own. Uh, but you are able to use the crowbar, jam it in there, and kind of try and try to jimmy it off. And after some tries you do, uh, you make one of the blades, uh, uh, you break the axle, and make one of the, one, one of the windmill blades uh, just sort of pop off the, the, what's it called? The, the whole centerpiece that it, where they are kept and are rotating and you see storm climb as it untethers from that and starts to sort of slink off you notice that the entirety of the construction because the blades are not just connected at the center they are also connected and tethered to one another and as you untether one and it seems to bring its whole weight down uh, it also brings all the other ones down with it as well. Something oh, you fail to observe as you were trying to find a weak spot. And you see the other blades just kind of coming towards the edge. And one by one they start popping off, uh, taking you with them. I jump off before it can happen? Sure. Uh, you're jumping Wait, off. Why are you? <laughs> Catch me! Oh god! <laughs> Are you trying to, to, to jump off to be caught by your party mates? Yes, I, I can like, do I'm that. I'm recognizing that it's all falling apart, so I'm hoping that Dragon Ander can catch like, me since he's got One of us is going to try and catch you. I'll try to catch you. Okay. All it all, I'll save you! And, and I run whatever I need to run 
to try and catch him. Okay, and are you make your best attempt to be where Stormclimb is gonna fall and not be hit by the falling blades. I will need you to make a dexterity saving throw, Ender. Yeah, I'm gonna try and jump as far as I can so he can so that he doesn't get caught. All right. Very good. So as the blades start falling, you Ender. You start weaving left and right, back and forth, just hearing this sickly crunch of splattering noise of meat and bone collapsing against the floor in a huge magnitude you were not expecting. And one after another, the blades just start collapsing, some of them breaking right away, some of them managing to just somehow fall flat. And you, Ender, see in the... All, 60 feet up high, 70 actually, this tiny tiny mouse just jumping, <laughs> free falling, <laughs> and you do your best to stay underneath him and dodging all the falling blades, and you find just the one spot where you will not get hit by any of the blades and you will be able to catch storm climb, and then you weave and jump, and he's able to catch storm climb in the air before he falls, and both of you are crushed crushed by another falling blade and you manage to jump just out of harm's way. Oh shit, I should have done an Assassin's Creed jump. <laughs> Thanks for the save, Ander! You're welcome. That was so reckless. Please take care. Dracul has I didn't a know that sign that would... has an 8 on it. <laughs> I didn't know that the whole thing would fall apart like that. Um, so... Did it work? Did we? Are there any blades on the ground that are still working? There seems to be. Look at them. There seems to be a couple that are still in good enough shape. Okay, Jack. This is where you come in. You're going to have to pick that up with your monstrous strength, your demigod strength, and just uh... carry it with us so that you can just swap those that bog away. I'm going to try and break a couple pieces off of one of the uh, windmill blades are probably like 30 or 40 feet long, so I'll try and break off a section of disgusting flesh-covered bone structure and perhaps use it as a large uh, wind generator. Um... I don't believe you're proficient with anything that could be used in this circumstance. Probably not, no. So make an intelligence check. Track there in. Oh! One would look at you and think that, hey, this, this big fella can't do anything in the way of crafting, but little do they know, you, are, you spend a whole lot of time in a mercenary company and... It would not be worth your salt if you didn't know how to repair things and fashion other things and improvise in very dire circumstances. And both Ender and Stormclimb are impressed when, after some time of finagling and fixing and crafting, you are able to pull out some sort of fan-like structure that you can hold with both hands and just wave back and forth to create strong wind currents. Or at least as strong as you can with such a improvised fan. Wow! <laughs> that looks great! I kind of imagine Drac like Minecraft punching it until it just <laughs> eventually turned into a more sizable fan. <laughs> uh, Ender is just like clapping, but with his facial expressions, not really clapping, you know? Just being present. <laughs> okay. Alright, oh. can we. Please. There's one. What else yeah, we'll do you need to do here? I need... Well, I kind of uh. need to tell you guys about what I saw up there. Um, so try not to piss your pants when I tell you this. And I tell them what I saw. About the I... buildings and the figure that somehow I was able to know it was a figure and not a dot so many miles away. I or hate so many feet away. Everything about that concept. And I'd really, 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 really like to leave. 
So yeah, can we go home now, please? Yeah, let's go. Ender and Dracterian, when you look to the horizon, westwards and southwards, uh, you see this sm very small little valley. Not 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 even a valley, just a small decline between the hill where you guys are and the next hill over, and where you see wooden buildings in the distance and. Far, far, far away, you see looming over all the buildings some figure that somehow you did not notice the first time around. Yeah. Yep. No. Yeah, I hate it. Yeah. No. We need to leave. Right now. Yep. Let's go. All right. I'm sling the fan over my shoulders. And let's start walking. Okay. So the three of you start to make your way out of the fate of the shadow fell sorry i almost went to another plane just just a oh. second please uh i don't have to keep adding stuff to my maps right it's a passive skill yes yes okay yeah but i mean like uh i figured you were already updating the map while we were getting stuff done and while drac was putting together the a more sizable fan also, I hopped back onto Drax's head, really uh, piloting him. <laughs> so yeah. But yeah, you 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 passively chart the regions where you are. You, you with yeah, your cartography I, I, tools. I assume that. Uh, of course, you do need your hands free to a degree. But it's something that you can do while you are walking or paying attention to something else. In any case, you chart this windmill, or former windmill at least, and its location. And then the three of you start to make your way back northwards, I believe. Yep, yep. north along the beach. Okay. River. <laughs> yeah, it's a river. Yeah. So yes, we making our way uptown, watching for fog, making our pass. Oh I, I, never mind. I'm I tripping know. myself. Taylor <laughs> Swift reference. I'm getting it. It's no. not Taylor Swift. <laughs> I actually don't know pop music, so I would never know. Regardless, you start to make your way back that direction, and you, Drake Terry. As you look into that direction, you just dread it too much, knowing that you have to face things, unspeakable things again, if you go that direction. And as soon as you see your party mates starting to go a little bit eastwards, towards the river, you just stop walking. It just feels like your legs, they just lock in place, and... You can't quite bring yourself to keep going. Or at least your body seems to give pause before following on. Are you okay? I am. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Would you prefer I put a blindfold on you? Absolutely not. What are you talking about? No. <laughs> Worry, we could just put a blindfold on you, and then I just feed you some sugar cubes, and then I pet him up, pet his head. You keep this up, and I'm throwing you at whatever the okay. hell we find next. Wait, we got I'm sugar the, cubes? I'm not the horse. Where did you get sugar? <laughs> part of the ration. Part of the ration pack? <sighs> no, I'm fine. Let's just keep going, but. Yeah. And he's just gonna kind of hesitantly keep going, but always looking for a different path potentially. All right, Drek Darren, make go a for make me a wisdom saving throw as you try to go back following the river. Oh no! All right, don't worry, Drek. You have disadvantage. Yes. I'm here with. What the? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> don't worry, Drek. I'm here with. <laughs> I, I'm a. You've got me on your side. You, I'm a palinger. That's a pal against danger. So I'll help you through this no matter what. You 
don't know whether or not it's yourself trying to be stoic and prove yourself to your friends and companions who to a huge degree are depending on you or if mm -hmm. it is indeed the fact that storm climb is a palinger that helps you force your feet to move one in front of the other and pick up the pace once again and keep on moving through this somewhat deserted hillside you just got one arm holding the fan and the other arm is like white knuckling his axe maybe i should invest in a whip <laughs> just to get just to force drac to keep moving <laughs> i am again not the horse and crop. again going to throw you really far if you keep that up <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, do we spot the the our the friendly fog that is not so friendly? You as you are walking along the river banks, you seem to get the small inkling of notion that you are indeed being followed by something. And as you look back, you do once again see the fog becoming thicker and almost chasing you very slowly but insidiously picking up speed and mass and you do start just you start to see faces forming in the mist itself let's test this out give it a whirl track okay put my x way and two hands and unfold the fan and whoop. try and send some wind at that fog Make a strength check. Oh my Ooh, god. Ooh! Damn, that's almost a nat 20. So, Drek Darren, you do manage to give give it your best whop. You go to one side and you send a very strong wind current. Uh, you see the... Bla uh, blades of dead grass on the ground get uh, being pushed away and shuffled into the wind that you are creating as you wish it to one side and then to another side and then to another side once again just creating this back and forth motion uh, just sending current of wind after current of wind with mighty uh, quite a huge might and you do see that indeed the fog that is uh, that is a little bit far away it starts to get pushed back with your as you as you stop to make this fanning motion but as that fog is dispersed you see that as soon as it's dispersed it sort of seems to fall down to the ground uh, being very low and then it starts to slither around to your sides and coalescing along with more fog that is reuniting around you. Oh I'm shit, gonna, so that didn't work at all, I'm did gonna I? gonna turn around Run! and just try and uh, do one big wind, try and cut a path through and then go. Big run. Okay. Yep. So all three of you just decide that this is not worth it and you turn around and start to run. And as I'm you taking this fan with me, though. Sure. As you do, you... I mean, it sort of worked. Yeah. Uh, as you do start to run around, you do notice that as soon as you run a a little bit on the other side, uh, the fog also seems to uh, perk up and coalesce in front of the ground, almost as if alive, and trying to uh, trying to surround you, and it forms itself in your path. A wall of fog with faces kind of just opening and closing their mouths at one another uh, trying to close you off I'm gonna ready my ring of the ram and I'm I going guess... to try and at the same time as like slowing to a jog just start buffeting wind in front of us to just try and create a hole basically like an arc in front of us that's safe all right so, direct daring. So don't waste charges on that ring. 
As you're running, you once again, you sort of, instead of going on a full frontal stance, <coughs> you stand sort of sideways, kind of sidling up through it as you keep on uh, wishing, uh, swishing your, <laughs> your fan made of bones and stretched skin back and forth. And you see that the the fog keeps on keeps on collapsing under the strength of this wing uh, of the wind, but not too much. And wherever there isn't wind, the the fog wall just keeps on forming, and you are able to create a little pathway for someone to go through. But you would need to stay behind and keep on throwing wind that way. Ander, go through first. And then, uh, right when Ander gets through, if he can, then I'm going to fire off the Ring of the Ram to create a pathway again so Drak can run through without getting touched. Uh, Ander, are you yeah. doing that? Yes, yes, I'm doing that. Uh, I would say, I want to say that. <laughs> All right, so Ander, you, as the, as you get in front of uh, Drak Daring, you feel a very strong wind current that almost pushes you forward as you as you get in front of it and go through this tunnel and as you go through you see just to your sides uh, the fog it seems to try and lash out at you with wispy t tendrils trying to catch you and you see that they come awfully close to you but as soon as they are almost within touch range they are blown away by the wind and they dissolve in the air before they're are able to make contact with your skin and you run through yes. this tunnel to the other side apparently there is another side and I imagine that storm climb you're riding Ender as you do no I'm riding Drac okay yeah I'm on the other side I'm kind of like hey guys it's safe here I guess since you said there, there is another great. side yeah and I say great get clear <laughs> And uh, then once, when, if Ander is going to get clear. Yeah, I'm going to clear the path, not be in front of a, you know, a ran. Yep, great. And then I'm going to fire off the ring of the ram. Uh, and of course, strike a awesome pose while I do it. Because I'm a palinger. <laughs> so you're going to take off running right as he does that. <laughs> All right. So, run, Jack. You do just that. You start running towards the wind wall, uh, and just as you're about to to get engulfed by it, storm climb. You just point forward with your with your belt, holding yourself onto Dracterion's horns, and just sort of do a pelvic thrust to. <laughs> To send forth this uh, this ram sort of like ball of force that just whooshes past, dispersing this entire fog wall, an evil fog wall, and creating a, a slightly bigger than Dracdarian sized hole for you to run through. Mine's bigger. <laughs> and I imagine Dracdarian that you just. You don't even stop. You just keep on I'm, running. Nope. Just keep going. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Doof, 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 doof. All right. So full on matrix run. <laughs> yeah. As soon as you're through it, uh, you find Ender on the other side that's also trying to keep a healthy distance from the fog wall, and the 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 three of you just keep on running in that direction for what feels like a good. <laughs> A, a quite a good amount of time and the fog every now and then it seems to uh, start building up a little ways ahead of you but then you just sort of weave a little bit off to the side and buffet more wind back and forth uh, following the same tactic over and over now uh, a little bit wiser treated so you don't uh, spend your charges from your ring slash belt and you just yeah. keep on running uh, for what feels like quite some time before you feel like you have cleared this area. Drac is constantly looking over his shoulders and just 
terrified looking of everything. It looks like the first plan worked. Uh, it looks like we made it. Oh my. That was... Uh, yeah, thought that's oh. over. Nope, not over yet. We still have to get out of this place. Yep, but we're almost there. Thanks, Drak, yeah. for holding it together. You did great. <sighs> yeah. I'll be much happier when I am in a bed at the guild, not in the Upside Down. Anyway. Yep. Uh, let's see, and then... Oh, yeah! Can... Make sure to write that down, Ander, about the whole fog thing. Apparently a little bit of wind can help, but it just needs to be very powerful, at least. Or at least some sort of, like, force magic. Absolutely noted. You're... Okay, cool. You didn't do any failed attempts. You just had the one attempt that apparently worked, so you have no idea how much wind you actually need to disrupt this fog wall, and... Lucky... Well, it's more than what Drac is doing. <laughs> Footnote, I don't know how well this works, but it works. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a compendium for the creature, it's just like... It's a hint. Yeah. I mean, further adventurers will have a much easier time if they have also a 22 strength ability score, but... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they could use magic wind. There, there should be spell casters, casters with that next adventuring group that goes into here. <laughs> should. should there probably should have been one here too? <laughs> yep. Uh, hey, I'm doing my best. <laughs> as you guys keep on moving forward, you start to hear several noises around you. Sounds like seems like. Uh, roaring of some huge gigantic beast and i need everyone to go ahead and make a wisdom saving throw oh fuck the what saving throw wisdom everyone everyone Shit. Oh, yeah. okay it's gonna be me is 11 enough to pass sure Uh, oh boy. You look around and you keep on hearing these roaring noises and you shake your head thinking, no, this must be some sort of illusion, some sort of whatever that's happening upon us. And you just... Can, can we identify from where it's coming from? In front of us? Side of? It seems weirdly enough to be coming from above you. By the way, is this wisdom safe for perception or sanity? Because uh, I don't know if Dre remembers that we get cards of inspiration. Oh no, I remember. I'm not using it on this. You Just This checking. doesn't seem important enough. You don't quite sure know Storm Climb. Rather, Napona, you don't quite know what sort of test this is. I'm just asking you to make tests. It's wisdom. So. Okay. You just shake your head, trying not to pay attention to the noises that seems to be coming from above. You, Drakdari, feel drawn to the noises, and as you look up, you see what appears to be a dragon flying overhead, snarling and roaring, also blue in color. And as you look at this dragon, you seem to recognize more and more features of it. It too seems to have white horns with rings on them. A deep blue scales with lighter blue scales down the chin and to the underbelly. It seems awfully oddly familiar it almost seems like you're looking at a bigger grown version of yourself this huge dragon flying downwards passing over you and seeming to looking forward to landing a few feet away from you and you feel drawn to it to slowly start walking towards it. So I'm riding on Drac. Do I notice that he's actually going uh, off 
away from Ander, basically? Of course I do. Hey, hey, Drek! No, not this way! Is he still... Does he snap out of it? I don't know. Do you, Drek, Daring? Probably not with just that. I'm gonna grab Martini and stab him, because this is no time for him to be lollygagging. But I'm not activating my power. The, I'm just, like, pricking his... Uh, I'm gonna boop the snoot, basically. <laughs> okay, so from atop uh, Drag Terrence's head, you pick up Martini, you unsheat it, and you start to try and, and poke at uh, Drag Terrence's face. And surprisingly enough, Dragonborn have very hard and hard scales, and it's kind of tricky to purse them with your toothpick of a weapon. Ander, help! He's going off course! And I guess I'm going to... Let's see. How do I try and wake him up? Um, uh, I guess so. Can I can I try and do and make a strength check to pilot him into the ground? I have a, a question before that. Do We don't know what he's seeing, right? Only he saw that. Uh, yeah, as you look over to Drek, you notice Drek there, and before you look up and you notice what seems to have been some sort of darkened silhouette just moving out of vision range. You're not entirely sure what he saw, but you know that he saw something. Drek, Drek, that's not the right way, and and it's gonna grab him by the shoulders, like, yeah, I, I bet I can do that. And, and shake him, like, Drek, Drek, focus. We don't have enough time. I, I have to. No, I need to. I need to take a look. There's, there's something. Actually, I still here. have the crowbar. I'm gonna whack him upside the head. Ow! See what the fuck? Ah, storm climb. <laughs> okay, I put the crowbar back uh, into the bag. Okay, that seems to work. Yeah, you were chasing uh, after something. This is no time to be, well, to caught in an illusion. Uh, we're in the Shadowfell. Remember? You didn't. You didn't see that. No, you don't see want to see that. Back. There was. It, it's. It was a. It's a dragon. It just flew right over what? our heads. It, I no, don't think just, so. There was a lot of weird noise. It looked, That's all I heard, and I didn't see anything in the sky. It. It looked like. I don't know, it, it kind of looked like me. Hmm. And as you guys are... Yeah, that's weird. As you guys are but together you... trying to snap Drek Daring out of it, all three of you hear again another dragon roar into the distance. Um, what? Yeah, I hear it too. Drek, okay, we well, can stay right. here. I... We need to get out of here quickly. Okay. If we stay here, you won't ever become the dragon that you thought you saw. Let's. We need. Let's. Uh, yeah, let's go. Let's go. Where? Uh, how are we going to get back? We're going to cross town. We're going straight through town. We We're don't going... have time to go through mud. We're going in? Yes. Yep. But don't worry, Andrew's got that map, remember? He'll guide us through, yep. at least through the... He'll try to find us the fastest route. We go stealth, we go safe, and we go through. That's the oh, plan. Yeah. Stealth, that works really well for me. Yeah, sure. All right, no, we'll give it a try. I'll help we'll with that. I'll help with that. Okay, okay, help with that. Don't Trust me, trust me. Let's get to town first. Yeah, let's do that. Just kind of looks back towards where he saw that creature and I force his head forward. Up, oh, keep going. Yeah. Look forward. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And uh, by the way, did we get? Did we arrive by that wagon yet, or is that closer to the city? That's the it's, other side. That's on the yes, other side of the city. Oh, okay, my side. my I, my navigation is all messed up. <laughs> yeah, we're Sorry. in the southeastern, or coming up on the southeastern yeah. part of the city, I'd imagine. You ask, yeah. uh, you ask Ender about that, and Ender just points you and tells you, "No, it's on the other side." 
Anyway, you three keep on moving northwards, trying to keep a healthy distance from the river bank, but also trying to not go straight too far from it in case you get lost somewhere. Uh, however, every once in a while, Storm Climb, you notice that Drek Daring just kind of looks back over his shoulder at whatever that was that seems to still hold his mind somewhat. And Drek Daring, you can't help but you feel a yearning to go back and see what that was. You know that that's not wise, you know that that might very well cost your life, but you need to know. But your friends, they don't want you to know. They want you to go back, to help them go back. And you feel conflicted and divided, and... What do you do next is up to you. Wait, don't you think it's weird that there's like magical mm -hmm. items in a place like this where it's supposed to be a land of decay and all that stuff? Who just leaves it there? Drag kind of just slows to a stop. Drag? Why are we stopping? Drag, we can't stay here. It's dangerous. You remember the rules that Anthony told us. I... It's already been over three hours. I... I need I need to figure out what that is though. It's Drek, it's important. Uh, Drek, no, uh, Drek, I promise if we we get out of here, I come again with you with more time and we look at whatever you want. But yeah, let's get out of here there. today. Yeah, I can't help I'm I'm very low on magic right now. I can't help you if we get in another tussle. Please kind of reach down and grab the symbol of my company and just kind of squeeze it and fine I'm coming back here though I need to know what that is we'll, we'll be here with you we will once we we'll rest once when we get back and rest up we'll head right back But right now, we're in serious danger. Fine. Both of you are going to help me, though. I need to know what that is. And he just angrily starts stomping towards town. Alright. As soon as you keep following up the river, you approach what seems to be the bridge that goes... that crosses the river. Once again, with several nooses hanging from the arches of the bridge with several bodies hanging from it. Tasteful. Yeah. Guys, I think I think this is the place we can... We should take some measures so we can cross town safely. And here, here's the thing. We might... It might take us a bit less than an hour to cross town if we go through some alleys and stuff. That's my best approximation. And I'm gonna help you guys. Drac, you, you told it that stealth is not your best and I'm gonna help you all. And I'm gonna cast Path with all trades. Uh, we, we are in the outskirts of town. Yeah, oh, okay, because I just didn't know how far away the bridge was from town. Like if that's like an extra 15 minutes of walking, you know? No, that, that a few, few hours. Hour. Yeah. It's about ish five minutes uh, from the bridge to, to the gate of town, and then from one gate to another, it uh, should be about 20 ish minutes. Yeah, that's what you told us the first adventure when we had to cross town. So I just assumed we could go stealthy in one hour. Yeah. Okay, okay. Sorry about interrupting you on that. I apologize. So what are you casting again? Path without trace. Alright. That leaves me at no key points. I wonder what that looks like when you're casting. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry to... <clears throat> it's more so that you notice that 
Ender just sort of as he approaches as all of you approach the the bridge and town itself you see Ender just slink closer to a wall and as he does his whole shape seems to merge with it and you know and and you keep looking at him and you can see that he is there but he is black and white for really acts as a very very effective camouflage in this environment and wow it's just really effective and as you stay close to him and there also teaches you a little bit about the art of camouflage and does his best to concentrate on paying very close attention to the two of you to make sure that you're also as well camouflaged as you can be with the current circumstances mm. and uh, whatever you have available on you at the moment. Yeah. Uh, and there it's gonna turn to Drac and say, and go, Drac, we'll be okay. Trust me. And please stay close. I... Okay, yes. Yes. Okay. You take the lead. Okay, so... I'm leading us into town. Alright. <clears throat> so, Ender... As you start to lead the party into town... Uh, you can't help but you notice that all houses... Once again, they're not quite truly there. The whole lot seems to be there and the where the walls would be they're actually not there there's just a a mark on the floor where the where the walls would be and the whole area inside is a few feet uh, uh, deeper and on there you see several graves with uh, tombstones for people that you don't quite know exactly whom you decide, I imagine, not to stop by and look each grave to see who they belong to. Or do you? Mm. 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 Yeah, no, uh, I killed I... the cat? Yeah. Oh. No, I'm focusing. I'm focusing. We're going out of town. We can't have any detours. I'm focused on the mission. All right. Yeah, we'll get back to that next time. Oh, will you, though? So, <clears throat> <laughs> as you keep on moving on, uh, doing your best to avoid being seen, you notice that there seems to be people slinking around town. Uh, you're... you're you decide that it's probably best not to inquire too much on who these people are, but they all look very, very, very miserable. You see uh, what appears to be humans and some other uh, animal folk creatures just looking very lousy. They look hurt, injured. Some of them have uh, bandaged arms and legs. Some of them even have bandaged faces and heads. And... They all seem to mostly be wandering aimlessly back and forth, left and right, without real direction, as they just move and do something that doesn't seem quite clear to you what exactly it is. And as you start walking through the streets of Redemption, you notice there's a huge amount of coffins that are just laying against certain walls. Uh, all these coffins seems to be chained, though. Can I use the Divine Sense? Sure. So, Stormclimb, as you still trying to stealth your way through town, you channel in your Divine Sense, uh, calling in the powers of Gaffador to try and decide, uh, perceive what is around you. And boy, oh boy, you feel several fiendish and undead presences around you. Oh boy. Like, um. too many to even count. The air just feels rancid and 
the stench of putridness and evil is just almost too much to bear. Oh god, okay, so, but I'm gonna stay as quiet as a rat right now until we find a safe place to talk or, you know, we get out of the town. Alright, I will need everyone yeah. to make a stealth check and you get to add a plus 10 to that. Because you are passing mm -hmm. without a trace. 18. 25. 29. So I guess I help <laughs> Drac with his stealth, even though it's an 18. Uh, there's not a whole lot of way for you to help him, I don't think. It's more like I make sure to direct him out of, like, accidentally walking into, I don't know, an undead cat or stepping into <laughs> a, a, I don't know, a loud bucket. Sneaking so he as like he's that. looking over his shoulder the entire time. Fair enough. Fair enough. As you're walking... As you're walking and you try your best to direct track daring, uh... Kind of slinking in between alleys and houses, decrepit, most of them. Uh, n this place does not feel nor looks pleasant at all. Uh, however, Ender does a very good job of leading the party through it, and Stormclimb will also make a very good job of leading Drakdarian away from one place or another. And at one moment, uh, as you're sort of just kind of skirting through the houses and putting your hands to the walls to feel your way around uh, one of you just seemingly dislodge a small stone into the wall and it just falls and clatters to the ground a little bit making some noise of, of stone on stone and as soon as that happens Ender just looks back and quick as a cat manages to pull the two of you into the nearest house, well, house terrain, sort of, that feels empty. And, well, pull you, Drakdarian, because Stormclimb is sort of just along for the ride, mostly. <laughs> That's right. So, Ender, you pull Drakdarian behind a wall and the two of you duck. And as you look, uh, several persons in the... Well, all of the people who seem to be wandering around town, they seem to look in your direction to try and decide what the noise was. And as they look, you can see now, as they turn, that half of their faces is missing. You can see that just the bone underneath. Some people don't have full portions of their bodies, some of them who seems to have bandaged hands and arms. As you look closer, you notice that they're, they are missing their entire arms, if not, uh, if, the, if not they have gigantic holes punched through their bodies. Some of them turn around and you notice that they still have uh, arrows and daggers and swords embedded into their corpses and you realize that this is not a town of the living, not anymore. Maybe it never was to begin with. And not only that, do they turn around to look, but some of the nearby coffins that are chained, uh, leaning against the walls, they start to rumble and shake when they sense the disturbance. Almost as if this, the whatever is inside is trying to leave. And you hear the the door of the coffins, the lids banging against the chains, trying to open, but it quite but it can't quite open up. And after a little bit of time, that feels like an eternity for the three of you. They seem to forget all about the noise. Everyone just turns their heads around and keep on going the direction they were. The coffins start stop rattling and shaking, and. All three of you noticed that your heartbeat had accelerated quite a lot. And you decide to look around and uh, before the whole 
before you're ready to keep on moving on. I need the three of you to make a perception check. Uh, does this include smell? No, it does not. How is right. the smell in this place? I really, I really curious right now. Probably oh, you should have asked. Uh, <laughs> it smells putrid. It's a smell of mud and earth, uh, of rot and decay. If it smells awfully bad everywhere that you that you go, and not only that, but there seems to be odd smells in the air as well. Some of which seems to be a uh, earring and fecal matter, and you also feel the very stingy, uh, heavy scent of iron and blood in the air as well. It's definitely not an inviting place or a fragrant place. Oh, the regret. Sweet, sweet regret. And sweet, sweet rot. I'm just so glad that the Ander has passed without trace. <laughs> Next up, as you look around trying to decide whether or not the the place is if you are ready and able to go, uh, Ander, you notice as you look around this sort of house that you're in, uh, one of the most one of the houses with the most intact walls. Uh, you notice, looking close by, one of the tombstones, it has a name. It's, uh, since it's close enough for you to be able to read it. And the name on the tombstone reads Leilin. I forget, is that the... I'm, I know that's one of the scouting groups, but was that the Samphodine, the Tiefling? It's the Samphodine. Okay, so uh, that's kind of awkward because we've got our hand in our. Oh, wait, yeah. no. Was, we have got No, wait, that's hands. the Tiefling. Yeah, yes. the Tiefling's hand is on our bag. Is I'm, our surprised, bag. I'm surprised we didn't ask Andrew to try and stitch back the. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> that corpse. <laughs> He's not a surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got, really but quiet. he's proficient in weaver's tools, so he he, I, he could stitch. That's that. not how this works. I don't think those go hand in hand. <laughs> you can if you have enough imagination. <laughs> in any case, um, suddenly, so, and there is Doctor Frankenstein. But anyway, <laughs> it's alive. But yeah, is there anything else that he sees other than the name of the tiefling? Uh, Ender, you notice that. There is a mound of earth next to this tombstone that reads the name Leilin. Uh, and you imagine that she was buried here. But you stop to think for a moment on how come someone would die here and who would go through the effort and emotions of burying anyone in this place. Yeah, I, I, I want to share this thought with everyone, exactly what you said, word by word. Besides... Yeah, that's, kind of, yeah, that's kind of freaky. And uh, it's kind of weird, how were they able to fish her out of that frozen lake? I was or, just about to sorry, ask. Sorry, frozen river. Is what, didn't we see her in the river? Yeah, that's what makes it so weird. Maybe that was an illusion? Maybe this is you know, I'm really hoping that this is all a misunderstanding and the uh, pe the citizens here are actually just really nice but miserable. So do you want to go talk to them? God, no! God. I mean, all the tombs are illusions. Maybe no one is buried. They are all somewhere in the town. By the way, make sure to record this, this Ander. By the way, Doug, do we see anything else other than the tombstone inside this uh House? Yes, you see that lying on top of the mound of earth seems to be a withered flower and a small backpack, small pouch even, with what you imagine might be belongings. I gotta get that pouch. I'm taking it. Do you really want to do that? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. I'm taking oh, it. Uh, 
very, very carefully. All right. I'm going to jump onto Ander to see in case he needs to make a dex check, and because I'm morbidly curious what'll happen. <laughs> sure. Uh, Ander, make a sleight of hand check. <laughs> Steal from the ground. Oh my god. You oh no! <laughs> Oh my god, why did you guys want to grave rob? Because grave robbing <laughs> in a different dimension! That's so cool! Yes. You guys are it, terrible! It was so easy! And there. Wait, uh, this is also stealthily, isn't it? Doesn't he still get a plus 10? I mean, <laughs> this is not stealth. Sleight of hand is not. Yeah, sleight of hand is not stealth. Tracy. <laughs> okay. Are you sure you don't want to add a card, Swart? And didn't even look at my card. Nope. <laughs> nope. All right. So, as soon as you approach the mound of earth and you approach your hands to try and grab for the pouch, uh, you'll give a little bit of pause looking around to see if this isn't some sort of obvious trap. But nothing seems to pop out to you as a trap of any kind and then you resume you leave the flower be it's withered anyways and you go for the pouch and as soon as you grab the pouch you just see the earth breaking as a hand just pops out of it and clasps your hand uh, very tightly and Ender I need you to make a wisdom saving throw as it does. I'm so dead. I'm so dead. I'm gonna add your card. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. What card is that? Three. Uh, that brings it to a 15. Yeah. Ender. As soon as you notice this hand grasping you, you go to scream and, uh, and reel back. But some sort of weird calmness just washes over you, uh, your monkish training showing very much, and you remain your calm. You just close your eyes for a little second and think to yourself, what's going on? And as you open your eyes, you notice that there's nothing going on. There's no hand grasping your arm. The mound of earth is still undisturbed. You wonder if this was some sort of illusion or not, as you pull away the pouch. And as you pull away the pouch, you can't help but you feel a small, cold, tingling sensation on your arm. And you notice that just a portion of your arm feels colder than it should. But you move away mm, from the... It's weird, but yeah, I'm gonna ignore that. You move away from the amount of earth back with your belongings and possessions. Yep. Yep, back to the mission. You're not even going to look inside. I'm no. I want to look inside after we, we go back. Let's just go for now. Okay, sure. I'm going to hop back onto Drac's head Can and I kind of resume piloting him. Look out the door, see if there's anyone near. Uh, there's not a whole lot of doors, really. It's just sort of crumbly walls, but this is high enough to be able to hide the three of you from mm. the passerbys. Uh, regardless, you do look around and you notice that eventually they seem to be roaming uh, aimlessly into a direction that is away from you in this particular moment. And you take that as your opportunity to just slink away Keep crossing through town. Come on, let's get out of this Resident Evil. Resident Evil. 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 As you do. <laughs> Drag Daring, once again you find that your legs don't quite want to move. As you notice oh, no. that you will have to cross a city of undead. I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh no! Trek Darian. 
you think about what you have to do right now and you start to hyperventilate almost too audibly and noisily and you just hunker down in the ground almost curling up and you corner uh, you back yourself into the, the the corner of these two walls that are granting the only form of defense between you and them and you can't find the strength to move or do anything no 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 Drag, come on we're almost there i can't no 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 mm -mm. We gotta go, Drac. It's it's now or never, Drac. We gotta go. And I'll tell you what, I've I've seen stuff you're you've been seeing, you know, and it's terrifying. And that's exactly why we have to get out of here. Please. There's the dead. They're, they're going to get no, no. If we stay right now, that's when they'll get us. We need to keep moving before Anders' ability expires. That's oh, true. You know, before before Ander isn't able to navigate us very well. We need to go now. Um, let's see. What can I do? Mm -hmm. Man, I can't really do anything. All my spells that can actually help him only work for like five seconds or six seconds sugar time then... bring that sugar cubes oh uh let's <laughs> yeah uh, you you want the blindfold track you want me to I'll make sure you don't see anything and i'll guide you out I, uh, do you want some water maybe that will help maybe could you just throw it on my face maybe i don't yep know. gladly and i'm gonna throw water on his face <laughs> silently <laughs> <laughs> Silently, yeah, not like a full <laughs> water cannon. So, as stealthily as you can, you start to unscork your water skin and raise Dracterinsen's head and just uh, splash some of it very quietly on his snout, trying to keep him uh, a little bit refreshed. Dracterin will also drink some of the, the water in the water skin, feeling that your body is just nearly collapsing from the physical mental stress that you're suffering and the only one moment when you truly feel like you maybe could do this is when you close your eyes because then you're not seeing the evil things you can still hear them and if you could focus your entire effort into Keeping your eyes closed and your ears covered to not see or hear them, maybe, just maybe, you could make it true. Okay. Yeah, you know what? You know what? Yeah, it's dumb, but sure. Just blindfold me. Just do it. Okay, I, I guess we'll... Let's see, what are we using for the blindfold up? I guess we can, like... Cut off some of Anders clothes. Drag just huh? reaches down and like pulls his chainmail aside and tears off part of the part of his belt. Nah, which tears off most has of the done belt. that more classy. And he just panics, kind of shaking, just ties it around his head. I help make sure it's tight, and then I feed him a sugar cube from the ration <laughs> kit. <laughs> what the fuck that are you doing? Of... Stop it! <laughs> sorry, sorry. There we go. There we go. And he, Nothing. No one dead here. Like and blindly reaches uh, out and see. grabs <laughs> Anders' arm and just like squeezes. Sure. Let's go, guys. That that's our chance. So, Drek Derry, <clears throat> uh, you do burn a few minutes just trying to, you know, do this, and seeing as you're walking blindly and having to physically guide Drek Darien, it's gonna take double the time for you to be able to cross the town. Luckily, you still have enough time to burn. Uh, regardless, Drek Darien, you using your belt, you blindfold yourself, you hold up one of your 
one of your hands through the side of your head trying to deafen yourself as best as you can to not hear the growling and moaning of the well the undead that is ridiculously close to you as you hold on to Anders' shoulder and allow the tiger folk to lead you into possibly safety. Did you want to say anything, okay. Stormclimb? Uh, I guess I keep feeding him sugar cubes, but I guess like I didn't know how much more time. <laughs> not I didn't know how much more time. <laughs> I didn't know how much more time we uh, Ander had with his cast without trace. So I was going to try and offer my last divine sense to help with any navigations if we had to. I don't know. Just uh, that that was what I was going to say. But keep going. Uh, <laughs> yeah, all I'm doing is just trying to make sure that Drak Darren stays calm throughout all this. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, sorry. you still have about half an hour of your pass without a trace, which is enough to get you close enough to the gates, not quite all the way over there. But you imagine that if you if you get close enough you can just you can just lag the last the last few feet and just run through because you're moving at half speed because well track there is blinded and being guided and shaking and hyperventilating and twitching at every noise that he hears yeah well you blind and deafened yourself so you're I'm like full on bird box one handed one hand deafened other hand oh. occupied <laughs> i mean like i could stuff it with something i don't have ears technically <laughs> Sugar cubes. It's dragon box. So How are you here? I mean it just works. Reptile skull. <laughs> it just Magic. works. It's a reptile hole in the skull. It don't we can talk about it not later. So um because all of you, Stormclimb and Ender, are focusing on helping Drakdarian navigate through this town of dead people, uh you are all going to make a stealth check with disadvantage. Like I said, I wanted to offer up my divine sense. Would that help any? Would that help at any with this roll? Not really. Yeah. Still a uh, 20, though. Uh, where's my stealth check? I found it. Sorry. 26. Could be a 35, but. <laughs> so close. <laughs> Well, it's still I'm so a, glad I got this armor. It's a lovely 17. <laughs> so the lowest you get is a 17 from yourself, Ender, as you're... It's, you find it very hard to concentrate with this big beef of a, of a dragonborn. Not only just kind of holding onto your shoulder for guidance, but squeezing it very hard, almost sinking his talons into it. Into the into into your flesh and it hurts like hell, but you allow it because you can endure a little pain if that means that none of you will die. It's definitely not super comfortable, but still you are able to guide guide your group uh, quietly through most of these buildings and around the town to. Near the other gate, and when you sense that about ish an hour has elapsed, when you have about some five minutes left in your in your pass without a trace ability, you look ahead and you see that the city gate is still some two hundred feet away, uh, if not well two three, kind of like five hundred feet away. Uh, it will take a little bit of time for you to moving slowly and quietly to get over there, uh, especially dodging and weaving through all of the undead. Uh, and you don't you don't think that you quite make it with only those five remaining minutes, uh, unless if you were to leg it and stop guiding Drek Derry. Mm. Mm. No. I want to just be with everyone, keep the group together. Ender's going to just ignore that. I'm going to try to find the 
the closest place to the gate that we can be together as the as the magic fades and then we'll think about something when when we're there yeah i hope your map has something yeah i, I guess we're assuming we're taking the best route based on the map all right fair enough so ender you do your best to find a, a place where you guys, the group, can hold in to uh, before you can uh, uh, before you're, you you can actually exit the city. And weirdly enough, the closest place you can get into before the magic fully truly fades is a church. The same church of Gaffodor that exists in the, well, in the real world in here. It's also a church that seems, oddly enough, not uh, desecrated by whatever fell evil intent this place has. This church seems to be the only almost pure-ish thing in this place. And you all, all three of you, just find it and do your best to open up the big door, get inside and close the door, being as quiet as possible. So, do I get a feeling from this church, Doug? What sort of feeling do you mean? I mean, it's a church of Gafter, so it's like, do do. Is this like one of those spots where I'm finally getting reception again with her <laughs> divinity, or am I really going to have to change to another service with AT and T Pay and Pray? Um, as you look around, you notice that all the imagery and symbols of Gaffodor that you're used to seeing in the church, in the in the material plane, they are not here. Instead, they have been replaced by another holy symbol. You see the symbol of an eye uh, with a triangle that is sort of intersecting it and where is intersecting, the colors are reversed, sort of. And you recognize that as the symbol of Eaglebeth, the god of night and death. Oh, that fucker. Okay. Um, so, is there anybody inside the church? As you look around, you do see, you perceive what appears to be uh, shapes, almost humanoid, all the way in the back of the church, seemingly cowering and hiding from you. You are able to notice that they, there are people inside this church, but they don't seem friendly or hostile enough, and they... Uh, they're doing their best to stay away from you. Okay, and they're cowering away, but does it seem like they're undead? Uh, looking from this distance, you have no way of telling. I whispered to Ander, Should we say hi? They're not posing a threat to us. It seems like they're scared of us. <sighs> I can't think of anything else to do, actually, so, yeah, I guess we shall introduce ourselves. We're, we're not, we aren't supposed to talk to anything over here, though. Shh, horses don't talk. I swear to God. <laughs> Stay here, guys. I'm gonna do Ender social skills. No! Uh, no, no! Don't! <laughs> I try to grasp at him, or at the very least, I just try to really wave at him to not do it at all. And if, if anything, we shouldn't really talk to them, just like what Drax said about the rules. Let's just try and keep our distance and just look around and see what we can... Um, see if there's like a second level to this church or something so we can get a better look. Can you guys hear me? I'm trying to whisper, yes. but I don't know if no, I need to good. get closer. You're good. We can hear you. Okay. Drax uh, is just going to kind of slump down and sit. 
I'm gonna look. Uh, sorry, Goldrick. I'm just gonna slump down against the wall. I'm gonna feed him another sugar cube. I, I'm going to. You go with Ender. I need <laughs> to just stop. Um, yeah, I'm gonna just stay here with you just to make sure yes. you don't chase the magic dragon again. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, it just rolled out like that. <laughs> I'm not um, high, I swear, guys. <laughs> uh, I, I want to take a look around the church. Like, just don't like it was a device without talking to people. Just trying to find a passage that it's not the front door. Anyway, we can go... Uh, more stealthily back to the city and through the gates. Uh, make a stealth check, Ender. I mean, no, sorry. Uh, 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 investigation check. Investigation. Yeah, because we all know that, no offense, Sword, but with Ander, his Ander's social skills rhymes with anti-social skills. <laughs> <laughs> and what about investigation? <laughs> Hey, you've got positive stats in intelligence, so I'm not going to stop you from that. Me and uh, Stormclimb and Drac are very average. So. Oh, never mind. I take that back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ender, you're trying to look around. You feel a sense of familiarity with this church uh, scene, as you have been to the Church of Cathedral back in the Material Plane. But this one, it seems... Like it was ransacked. Uh, everything in here seems to be uh, used as some sort of a barricade to shut the doors, the windows, everything. And only this main area seems accessible. And when you try to look around, you just hear more whisperings and cowerings from these figures that seems to be in the back. Okay. Um... So does Ander, uh, did you tell us this, Ander? Uh, I'm He's gonna like go back the to the group. <laughs> yeah, but if that's what I can do with the investigation, I'm gonna try and go back to them and just disclose. Okay, so, well, uh, maybe I should take a, look, take a look around. I've been here a lot longer than you have. I've been, hand, I've been helping Father Azin in the past a couple of times back when he spotted me for doing spotted me for the potion making so can I make an investigation um, Drac do you want to come with me no no I'll stay here with him okay yeah it's good that we have a buddy system going on so can I um, make that check sure do I get advantage because I have a better uh, knowledge of the layout no, you do than not. Ander does? <laughs> it's a straight roll. Okay, 16. <laughs> I am somehow better at detective work than Ander. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, like Ander. a lot, every single time. Uh, looking I around... Street smarts. Looking around Stormclimb, you do find passages out. Problem is... They're much higher. They're uh, a pane of window that seems to be missing in one of the vitrals uh, further to the back of the church. Uh, that seems to give a passage outside, not into the street, but into uh, the lower, uh, the lower height roof on the outside of the uh, of the church. However, not only is that passage high, but you looking at it. You get the sense that Drak Daring would not fit in there, and even Ender would have a, a hard ish time squeezing through there. I'm a cat. Well, sorry, Yohander, you can't yoga your way through this one. <laughs> uh, you get the sense that you get the sense that en to... Ender would be able to make it through, uh, but Drak Daring definitely would not be able to. Okay, but and it leads into the lower levels of the church it leads into the outside into the rooftop the church into has the yeah the, the the church has like a side 
rooftops to the sides where it's like a high a balcony sort of like a balcony yeah but they're just rooftops okay okay i'm going to run back to the gang and tell my teammates about this um ander we can't leave track alone so maybe since it seems like you'll be able to squeeze through why don't you uh go through it and get a lay of the land you can use this chance to update your map Sure. Shouldn't we just be trying to get out of here? Yeah, we, we are, should. but we need more info. Uh, can we? Just for a quick skill check, I was thinking, like, best they can do right now for us if we need something else, like magical, is create a distraction for a minute and like. Oh yeah, of course. Like, uh, I wanted to like start a fire somewhere or just throw my javelin, but I wanted to, like, get some info first. But, yeah, that's a good idea. Um, I I personally don't feel like we're gonna find something that I, Ender should not know. Um, thinking, like, I, everything the town so far seems to be like it is on the overworld. So. Oh, yeah. Well, that that's true but there's also keeping since you'll be on the rooftop you'll be able to keep track of like everybody's walking patterns like in stealth games you know sure i'm going to the rooftop all right because we're assuming they walk in cycles yeah so yeah they got nothing better to do and i'm going to stay behind with drac sure so uh ander you climb the into the window, uh, into like the walls, making your way over to the windows using some of the wood planks and such that have been uh, uh, that have been laid against the walls, some sort of barricade. You use that as support to climb up, and then you get all the way up to the window pane that is missing, and you are able to just just barely squeeze your way, your way out of it into the cold, dank outside. And then you climb all the way to the rooftop, and as you do, you notice something you had not seen before, uh, perching on the very edge, on the front edge of the church uh, roof, there seems to be some sort of figure that is just looking over the entire city and seems to not have noticed you. Mm. Can I... what can I get from this figure? It's humanoid or... Does it look alive, dead? Uh, it looks awfully... awfully still. Uh, it does seem somewhat humanoid, but... It definitely uh, looks weird. You can make a nature check if you would like. Nature? Yes, nature. Thirteen. Looking at this creature, you recognize it from some stories you have heard, uh, especially, um, well, mostly stories I have heard from, uh, from, from some time before. Not quite recent, but still, you recognize this creature as a gargoyle. And it seems to be perched at the very edge. And you're not entirely sure if it is fully alive or not, until you see a very tiny, tiny twitch of it, one of its wings. Oh my. But this creature does not seem to have noticed you. Yeah, I wanna go pat in the head. No, I'm not doing that. I'm just thinking out loud. Um, um, can I see any way out that... Any way we can go through that 
we don't have to go through its line of sight. Um, it is perched on the very edge of the church, close to the entrance where you guys went in. Um, unfortunately, from, from where it is, it has very clear line of sight to the smaller eastern gate that is closer to the sacred grove where you guys want to go. It does not seem to be looking over the other gate, the south uh, the southwest gate. The bigger one. Um, I can't by any means sense whether it's dangerous or not, right? Or can I? Not quite, no. Okay. Uh, I just think I'd better head back and warn the guys about it. All right. Um, hey, uh, quick question. How long did it take for Andrew to do all this? Uh, not too Cause... long. I would say some five, ten minutes-ish. Okay, because I figured while I'm here, I would try to, since we got time, I figured I'd have Storm Climb cast Detect Magic as a ritual, so I don't have to spend any uh, spell slots. Sure. Uh, Detect Magic has a range of 30 feet, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, close to where you are, covering against the corner by the door, you can't detect anything. The church is somewhat big. Okay. So, I, okay, so I guess nothing. Just absolute nothing. So I guess that's it. Thanks. Uh, unless you wanted to cast it and move around the church to see if you can detect something else. It does last for 10 minutes. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm, yeah, I'm able to keep it up for 10 minutes, so I guess I'll just make sure to keep my social distancing with the people in the church and just try to wander a little bit with Drac. You're pulling Drac daring along. He's blind. I'm just w walking him around for a little bit and I'm like, I just need your help to look at some things right now. Okay? Belligerently, kind of half stumbling, blind, freaked out. Yeah, but at least Light. he's a little he's bit just... angry with the sugar cubes I've been feeding him, so <laughs> he's a little bit saner. Anger provides me focus. <laughs> I'm not a barbarian. <laughs> No, but it provides you a distraction from being afraid. I guess I'll try and follow the wall with my hands instead of potentially running in the pews. Hey, I'm guiding like you. I'm the pi I'm piloting you, remember? <laughs> I don't trust that. Not in this state of mind. <laughs> no. You know what? That's fair. Fair enough. So, as you try and guide uh, Drek Daring around, just sense if there's any magic nearby. You do sense that f the corner where the peop the cowering people are, there seems to be some magic aura coming in from them. Okay, um, am I able to identify the school of magic from that? Mm, yeah, it feels necromancy. Oh. Okay, whatever. And I lead Drac back to the pews. Whatever, says he. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, the best control. whatever type of magic. <laughs> whatever kind of magic, you know. I mean, it, yeah. I'm not. I mean, like, I'm not gonna tell Drac about that because I don't want him to freak out. Have a panic more. attack? He's gonna. <laughs> <laughs> but good thing that Drac can't. I am I the only one that can see this? The, the faint aura? Yeah, oh, you... you detect magic. Yeah, you're the only one casting the spell, so only you can see it. Feel it, even. Okay, well, I just didn't know. It, it doesn't really say if, like... It's on your Sure, I sense it, but it doesn't really say if, like, it turns the object or person into, like, a glow stick that everybody can immediately tell, hey, there's something there. No. <laughs> it would but, say that yeah. explicitly okay. if it did. Okay, then. Yeah. Okay. So we make our way, or at least I try to convince Drak to go back to the, the pews now that I've finished casting my Detect back Magic. Slumps next to the door, just kind of holding onto his axe. 
I guess well, by now I'm Sandra Bullock. <laughs> yeah, you look like a Dark Souls character right now. I probably, am a Dark that, Souls character right now. <laughs> just blindfolding yourself. I'm <laughs> sitting in a church a holding an axe. Laughter. Yeah, I'm I'm sitting in a church holding an axe, <laughs> blindfolded, crying and mumbling to myself. I am we a need a bonfire. Right <laughs> yeah, the only difference is that you've got a rat <laughs> sitting on top of your head. Uh, I don't know. That still feels pretty Dark Souls. <laughs> True. Anyway, don't go hollow. I guess Andrew will be back right now. Yep. So I'm gonna tell the guys, hey guys, like more, hey guys. Uh, I guess. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah. Hey. It's Hi. a party. Hi. Oh, hello, guys. I must. Long time. <laughs> what? Okay. Uh, okay. Back to back to back to. Um, uh, hey guys, there's a. A weird dude up there. He's been watching over the exit, so it's a gargoyle, I guess. A, I, th a gargoyle? I think. Yep. Like and it looks alive. So, mm, so I'm not gonna tell you guys just something. Facing. Oh God. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a Church of Eaglebeth. Um, he's the god of secrets and darkness. Did I get that right? Doug. Night and dark. yeah, all those things are said dark and night and uh, death as well. Death, yeah, and it seems like somebody in this room is casting magic, so there's a chance that that might be the guardian of this church, or it could just be waiting for somebody just to wander outside and then shoop, pick us off like a hawk. But uh, yeah, but it could be either a good or bad thing. It sounds all bad to me. It so sounds I, bad. How do we how do we get out of here then? Do we run? I idea. I can conjure illusions for up to a minute. So guys, we might be able to just squeeze around the corner of the church while he's looking away to the are other you, side. Are you spent for the day or can you still do more? I can do this. I can do this one. It's the only that, thing that, I can do that, right now. It sounds like a better idea than just trying to run. Wait, did you even try to, like, cast some magic up when you were up there? Just to see if he would, like, you know, you cast a, you make a, an illusionary bird fly in front of him. See if he reacts to that. Nope, didn't try that. Oh, okay. So, then, what's the plan? We're gonna try and Oh wait, that's right. Did you did you manage to catch a glimpse at the people wandering around? You know, see what their walking patterns are. Um, you no. paid some attention to the people, but they seemed very erratic. They didn't seem to stick to any one pattern. They seemed to go over to the gate. Some of them uh, stopped. To just kind of stare at the gate for quite a while. Some of them just stopped by the gate and turned around immediately and started going elsewhere. You get this. You got the sense, however, Ander, that these creatures don't seem to wander outside of the gates. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, so that we can. I guess first step, if we can just get around the corner of the church. And go to the to the giant gate. We can just go the rest of the way uh, around the town and through the grove. Okay. Um. My idea is that I could just you. I can go onto the rooftop, start a small fire, and uh, throw it somewhere on the other side of the church, so that all the 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 people here can. Uh, outside of the church can be drawn towards it and then we just like sneak around them there's still a problem of a gargoyle just kind of watching everything that's why i'm hoping that he'll be distracted by the fire i guess we can certainly try but um ender's uh, illusion seems like it would yeah. be the most you know keeping us out of harm's potential way I mean, starting That's a fire kind of... What happens if you start the fire and I get separated and I'm blind and on fire? How would... 
Okay, you know, how about this? How about I go up there and just see if I can talk to the uh, gargoyle? And if he starts getting hostile, I can immediately squeeze back in to uh, back through that opening. And then we can figure out what to do next. I prefer just to run for now. I've tried. Well, well I mean, like, I want to try and see if this, this gargoyle is actually on our side or not. We Nothing in here is friendly. We, we need to leave. Yeah, and if he's not, there's no way to go to a plan B. Maybe. I mean, it seems like he can't get plans. inside the church. I don't know about... I mean... Otherwise, he would have done it already. Well, it, patient hunters wait and watch for when their prey is the most exposed. Maybe it is some type of hunting monster. Um, hey, Doug, do I happen to have any knowledge about gargoyles? Make a nature check. One would think this is a religion check, but no, it's nature. It's a creature. Because yeah. they're not themed. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Six. Um. Six, six. You have seen gargoyles before storm climb along at some times you remember seeing the palangers and at other times you remember seeing the gargoyles and you don't quite remember much aside outside from them being kind of violent grim and always sneaking around churches and well a church and hanging out with a uh with a woman they were also oddly sexy for some reason. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Hey, this this isn't in character. This is all in my mind, palace man. <laughs> You're not in here. Get out. My mind palace. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. So, alrighty then. So, what do we feel like doing then? I can spell it for you if you want me to running what if we just do both of your plans i have so many torches and i can just throw one and then ender can create an illusion and then we just run the way that neither of those things go How sounds like a plan that, i feel pretty confident in that because then we okay, can have a split diversion we can we can do your fire plan and Put it, I mean, I can light the building on fire, probably. I've got uh, eight torches, probably, still. I'd love to see something burn. Yeah, it's too bad there's no secret um, but... passages in this church, or at the very least, some way into the sewers. But then again, that's probably an even worse situation I... for you guys. I don't think I'd want to go to the sewers in the real world, let alone the evil world, <laughs> so... Maybe mm -hmm. let's avoid that one. Plus, that mm -hmm. would get Ender dirty, and that's not okay. He's already dirty enough. It's mm -hmm. not like any more will have matter. I, I, I feel like the sewers will be just frozen, so I don't think they'll be dirty. So, but I agree, it's dangerous. That that I agree. Let's let's just try and create a diversion. And then diversion, can... fire, and diversion. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I guess I take that torch and go up to the rooftop. Is that what I'm doing, or are we just like just... just tossing them both out the door at once? I mean, if we have the illusion, run one direction and huck the torch straight away, then we could just make a break for it. Uh, I have a one question actually with my thirteen nature roll. Do I get to remember something that? Gargoyles may be interested in that should take their attention for a full minute or so, or um, we're going rainbow. Uh, it seems to really love you. You know, from some stories I have heard that it seems to pass time. 
hunting little things like birds and rodents. But what it really loves is living, breeding sentient creatures. Okay. Uh, so, okay, so based on that, guys, I guess the best, best, uh, our best shot is to use the fire to distract the undead and use the illusion on the gargoyle. I can create sound, actually, which could be some small creature sound. So it will take more time for him to realize that that's an illusion. Because if it's visual, he would just try to attack and realize that sooner. And we distract the gargoyle with sound. He will search for small creatures on the rooftop while we create the fire illusion on the streets. What do you guys think about it? I think it sounds smart. I think we need to start breaking out some torches here and getting them lit up. You, okay, I guess. You work on... Um, you work on your magic or whatever you're doing. Sure. How so tall is the church? <laughs> Come again? How tall is the church? Ah, it's somewhat tall-ish. Like <clears throat> the height to the first, uh, to the lower uh, rooftops from where you can access the outside on the missing window pane is about fifteen feet high, and then climbing the outside to the tower to the top of the church itself is about uh, some fifteen more feet, so thirty in total. Okay, so I can cast it from the second floor. I can cast thirty feet away. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, that's the plan. So guys, while you're getting ready, I'll be on the second floor. I'll cast the illusion and we go through the door. All right? Okay. Uh, hey, Doug, do I know anything about the followers of Igelbeth? Uh, In regards to what? Well, it's just kind of weird that there's just... A whole bunch of people here, necromantic energy, and so I just wanted to try and, I don't know, see if this is actually um, a nice god to contact or even uh, contact the the worshippers of Igelbeth. Because, you know, if this is a good god, maybe we can uh, ask for some assistance and even talk to these people. Make a history or religion check. History, then, history to know about the followers and religion to know about the god itself. Ah, shit. Um, well, I'm proficient in religion, so I'm just gonna go with that. Sure. Actually, can I go? Whoa, nat twenty. <laughs> Don't say anything else. <laughs> yeah, actually, the god's your best friend. You guys just had have some beers every now and then. <laughs> You, Stormclimb, knows that uh, some many years ago, Eaglebeth was, according to what you have heard, Azim tell you uh, in your studies, as you were helping the poor and unfortunate and the rats, uh, telling you that Eaglebeth wasn't always a widely and openly worshipped god. It used to be that Igobeth was symbol with necromantic rituals and death and other foul things uh, until several many years ago and those things have changed and uh, people stopped worshipping Igobeth uh, for evil intent and started uh, a priest started spreading the the true word of Eaglebath, a Sanfidine priest from very far away. And in recent years, worshipping of Eaglebath has returned to a more uh, well-intended folk, but all the other followers of Eaglebath who used to follow it for nefarious purposes uh, once they were revealed to exist and worship Eaglebath by 
well, for evil intent, they have been ostracized and cast away. Some of which have disappeared forever, some of which have been hunted down, some of which have been captured and converted. And, well, you can't really imagine where they could have run to, but now you get a very good inkling of clue that this might be where they hide. The ones who worship the false word of Eagle Death. Ah, okay. So definitely gonna keep on maintaining my social distancing with them. So, uh, yeah, I guess let's go with the the plan. What exactly did you need Stormclimb to do again, Ander? Blind uh, Drag is going to pull out torches for you to light yes. and help, and then give him and tell him where to throw them. <laughs> Yeah, as soon as the torches are ready, I'll... Oh, don't light them just yet. <laughs> I'm going to light them once when I get up to the the rooftop, because I have to carry that through uh, some through some passages and stuff. So I have to yeah. blindly wander just outside no. to get ready to run. <laughs> you guys don't have to go to the rooftop, actually, because the gargoyle will be on the rooftop looking for whatever we throw the torches through the front door the gargoyle will not be looking oh okay yeah but I was just trying to be aware of the you know other citizens here in out, outside of the church mm. uh, that's that's hard because if we try to light the torches on the rooftop the gargoyle will notice us before we can even throw them anywhere. Okay, so I guess we go with your plan then. Uh, sorry, dog. The 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 crack on the window or the passage that Ender took. Which side of the church is it? Uh, luckily for you, it's closer to the gate. Closer to the gate. Yep. Yeah. Hey, quick question. What do we name this town, anyways? It's not Redemption. We could call Light it. Town? Uh, Forsaken? Yeah, hey, that's a good one. Can we do that later? I'm sorry, I'm just. This is a very. This is very stressful for all of us, okay? I'm just doing what I can't. My mind can't help but wander a little bit just to keep myself from waking out like Drac is. Uh, I get it. Sorry, but time is running out. Plan, plan is we open a crack in the door, just a little crack, throw the torches through it to the other side of the street, as far away to the right side as we can. Sorry, magic first, torch second, then we fully open the door, as, not fully, but as much as we need, and we run left. That's the plan. Steps one, two, and three. Okay. Um, okay. Let's do it. I guess we'll do that. Okay. So, Ender goes to the second floor. And you guys, as soon as you're ready to throw torches, I'll distract the guy gargoyle. Yep. One, uh, I guess two, we do that. Three. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna cast the the thing on on the rooftop to distract the gargoyle. All right, so Ender, you cast an image of what on the rooftop? Uh, just sounds of rodents and creatures. He might want to chase after. Okay. And anyway, I wanna cast it like under the roof because the sounds go through walls, right? Just the images that. Oh, yeah. That are dispersed. Uh, you cast the sound of rodents and you tr try your best to make a somewhat believable impression of Storm Climb. Uh, just, <laughs> just, just sort of talking and uh, squeaking his way around and about under the rooftop very audibly. And you notice a twitch on the gargoyle and it seems to look back to the source of the sound. Uh, but very slowly, very deliberately, 
trying not to disturb anything around it as it does so. And you get the sense that it was it is currently being distracted by the noise. Okay guys, let's go. Okay. So uh, I can't really move, so it's up to Drac. <laughs> Wait for Ender. To, are you going off the side of the building, or are you coming back down? Uh, 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 I'm coming back down, going through the door. I'm not making a jump sound. <laughs> Slowly try and creak the door open without making much noise, and then just sneak along. Guide me, my friends. <laughs> so you open the door and try to sneak out of Shadow Redemption, right? To the left, yeah. Towards the big gate. Okay. Are you throwing torches somewhere? I'm throwing torches the opposite direction. Two, two lit torches go across the street as far as Drac can throw them. All right. To the right. Blind, so I mean, he doesn't know. If I'm making sure so. to guide <laughs> Drac <laughs> with his throw, <laughs> so that he doesn't <laughs> accidentally like somehow throw it right back into the church. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, I'll say that once again, all three of you make a stealth check with disadvantage. Oh right. Oh no! <laughs> How about I just natural one? I just... Should I just forget about rolling? No, do roll. Not even my card is going to help in this scenario. <laughs> I need yeah, numbers. Well, I'm in the same boat, so we're both. I'm. I, I guess that explains it. I'm riding on top of you. Sure. It was. It was nice knowing you guys. Sorry. All right, now, Drek Daring, I need you to make a. A strength check. Well, he's still blindfolded. Yes, yeah, oh. a, a strength check with disadvantage. I'm consistently oh. good at one thing. <laughs> All right. Seems like you're consistently average. So, burr, burr, burr. He, as all of you start start to make your way out of the church, Drek Daring, uh, as soon as everyone just says go, you pick one of your torches and you just toss it in the opposite direction from where you guys are going and you just hear a very loud bang as the as the torch just clatters against the stone wall inches from your face as you just throw it against the the walls of the church itself Shit. And, what the fuck? <laughs> and then you immediately pick another torch and try to lob it a little bit further to the left and just toss it it doesn't go quite as far but it does land on the other side of the street, uh, somewhat far away from where you guys are. And uh, it seems to clatter against one of the chained coffins, and as soon as it does, uh, the chained coffin starts to rattle, and a lot of the undead in the vicinity, they look towards, the, towards that noise, and they start to kind of shuffle, shumble towards it, uh, away from you and you take this opportunity to just l absolutely lag it to the western gate southwestern gate I imagine however as you do there are a few uh, zombies and undead rather in your path who are well who have caught wind of your first torch throw against the against the wall of the uh, of the church and even though you can't see them track there you're still running doing your best so this would be a storm climb this would be on storm climb and ender to try and guide you away from them as you do your best to exit town so let me look at your character sheet to see what the hell kind of test i will ask mm. Mm-hmm. So, Help me, I'm blind. Uh, neither of you have proficiency in land vehicles, do you? Uh, only I do. Does. <laughs> the blind crazy guy. <laughs> yeah, I just have mounted combatant as my way of uh, piloting Dragonander. Oh, you're right. So this would be a... 
Oh man, I will say... Sure, because why not? Make a performance check. Storm climb as you're piloting a uh, track daring. This is to see how well you can influence him around. Whoa! Just 21! Jaeger mode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much like uh, piloting, uh, what do they call it, like an Eva from Evangelion? I don't even know, Whatever. but... you're my Megazord right now. <laughs> pretty much, you're just uh, doing your best to throw all... All uh, to throw your power and commanding to your voice as you say straight ahead to the right to the left double down or tackle or whatever you just start giving orders and uh, you give them with such confidence and such a powerful deliver that Drek Darian does not question them even for a second and he does exactly as you're telling him and uh, boy oh boy he does amazingly at running through this mob of undead people who are uh, right against all of you. So, <laughs> nice. You storm climb make it uh, make it so both Trek Daring and Ender can just dodge and weave through all of these uh, undead that are still sort of in your way until you reach the gate. Now we'll have the two of you. Drag Darien and Ender make a dexterity saving throw with advantage. Or normal for me, because... Permanent disadvantage, yay! True. Oh, yes. What? Oh, oh, my... Good oh, Lord. no! <laughs> well, don't worry, you're, I'm still piloting you, so you only take half of what's going to be thrown at you. Bye, guys, I'm going in a hole. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Ender, <laughs> as some of these undead creatures try to uh, strike at you, you're, you do your best to just uh, weave left and right and completely dodge all of them. Uh, Draenef, however, I mean, sorry, Drek Daring, however, you do not. You're not quick nor fast enough. So I need you to roll a d6 and double it. Six. six. All right, you are attacked by six zombies. Oh god! <laughs> oh god! <laughs> so the oh, that's it. The first attack is a fourteen, which misses. Don't worry, I'm taking all of these hits. The second is a twenty-one, which hits. Uh, I'm going to use my plus three, uh, with uh, my T to make sure that doesn't hit. All right. So you, uh, as soon as it comes, you feel the heat, the heat of your of your tea uh, warming you up, and you manage to just put your shield, uh, uh, interposing it between you, uh, the zombie, and and Drakdari. And just as you pull up your shield, a flush of divine light just uh, apparates a spiritual shield that completely blocks off the attack. As your Adolin uh, helps you. Uh, deflect this attack completely. Yes. And then some more zombies come. Another is a 15 to hit. That's yes. a 13 to hit. Nothing miss. An 11 to hit. I mean, it almost did, but nah. And a 12. The one still stands. <laughs> so all the, all these zombies, they just try their best to rake at you and just slam you with their fists. And uh, to a degree, they do hit a few of those strikes, but most of them just uh, bounces off your armor. Some of them, uh, they think that they are going to punch you, but you end up punching them as you tackle, to, tackle through all of the zombies, Dracteri. And you're pretty much just bull rushing your way towards the exit uh, using the guidance of Stormclimb, who's at this point is having quite an experience piloting a blind uh, dragonborn that's just tackling <laughs> down zombie after zombie uh, on your way out. 
uh, instead of grace of, gracefully dodging all of them like Ender is doing. <laughs> Get out of my way! <laughs> He's like, a, Ender's like doing, practically doing like ballet and just pirouetting and cartwheeling <laughs> meanwhile. <laughs> Me and Drac are just like powering through it, just like a Megazord basically. Hot soup! Just as Coming through, hot soup! <laughs> Pretty much, watching Dra uh, Drac Daring plow through the zombies Feels like you're watching Destruction Derby, whereas watching Ender go through them feels like you're watching a Jackie Chan movie. It's two complete opposite experiences, but both of them very entertaining. <laughs> Regardless, the three of you make your way to the outside of town after a whole lot of running. And as you do, you notice that uh, all these zombies that were trying to uh, follow you, they suddenly stop at the gate and they don't cross the threshold. That's oh. weird. God, Drag, Drag, Drag is still running because he's blind and scared out of his mind. Can I flip the zombies? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> sure. You no. you turn around and there and you give them the double bird, and then you turn around and chase after Drek there and he's still running. <laughs> yes, what a legendary move from the great Ander, doing something so punk. Fuck you, zombies. <laughs> and after Can running a little bit, uh, storm climb, you realize that Drek Darren is just following the road. He's not going towards the sacred grove, he's going towards the abandoned wagon further down. As he keeps Drag, just stop. blindly running. Oh wait, Drak, stop! You gotta stop right now! <laughs> We're about to crash! We're about to head into the wagon! It's kinda slow down. Okay, oh, are we... where are we? What happened? Oh, did we make it? Are we okay? Yeah, we made yep, it. Yep, we made it! We're fine! Hmm, okay. Oh. I mean, oh, yeah, we're out of town. Go. We're fine-ish. By the way, I don't know if it was apparent to you guys, but like, other than the people in the church, all of those, all of the citizens were undead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I kind of, I kind of noticed. It. Yeah, I detected so much undead and fiendish energy, and uh, it turns out the people in the church were practicing necromancy. No, oh, don't tell me and that. And it might not be a good idea to associate ourselves with those people. Um, turns out they're followers of Igobet, and there might be a chance that um, the heretic followers of Igobet might be there, so they could also be posing as a threat. Uh, unlike the uh, the actual Igobet followers in the mortal realm, you know, those guys are fairly good. So, yeah. Um, I hate every sentence that just came out of your mouth. I want you to know that. Yeah, I, yeah. I didn't want you to freak out. So Can I take I just my blindfold off? Yeah, go ahead. Thank okay, you. thank God. Okay. Yeah. Turn it back into a belt. Well, no, it's ripped. Never mind. Uh, let, let, me, let me take time, because last time we were here, I forgot to ask about this. What's on the grounds of the guild, where the grounds of the guild are supposed to be. It's just crumbled walls and stuff like that. Uh, there are walls around the guild, like the, 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 the training grounds themselves, and these walls are still here in this uh, reverse world, so it's... You can't really see inside, and on the front of the guild, all around it, as best as you can see, there's just walls. You don't know, you don't quite well know what's on the inside, but on the outside, all you see is walls. Uh, and some of the roof, which feels uh, odd, it's on a, of a different color, they seem grayed out, whereas on the real world, they're sort of bluish. In here, they're grayed out, and some of them feels, uh, look cracked, and you I swear you can see holes in it as well. Uh, it was just out of curiosity, not sharing this with people, like trying to notice. I mean, I, it's on my map now, but I'm not like interested. Maybe a little, but. Uh... 
Yeah, make sure to write down our experience uh, about the, you know, about that the town, the, well, it's not really a uh, redemption. It's more like Forsaken at this point. Um, and also... Shoot, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> it's just so much to take in from that whole event. Uh, let, let me... Uh, we yeah, really sure need to, to go like, through the portal. Head inside, don't come in. Okay. Oh, <laughs> right. Uh, do we do we see the, the wagon? You do. Still in the distance, you do see the wagon. I'm gonna be stupid and throw a rock at it. It's my turn to be stupid. Fair enough. Make a strength check. You're quite a ways away from it. Uh... Are you sure it's, uh, can it be in athletics? No, it's a strength check. Fooey, okay. <laughs> it's a net one. Wow, that's the best throw Just I've like ever seen in my life. Just like goes only an inch. <laughs> wow. The rock dissolves in your hand, and the, the, just a cloud of dust. Uh, Storm Climb, you ask Drek Daring to pick up a, a rock for you. A sizable one that is almost your size and you do your best to kind of hold it and you do a lot of exertion just to lift this rock uh, above Drek Daring <laughs> when your idol is not helping you and as you try to toss it you can't really do it because you're holding it with both of your hands so you can't really reel back and toss it in you just kind of sort of push it and it just falls limply to the ground impressing absolutely nobody do you want <laughs> me to give it a shot instead? <sighs> yes, please. Okay, pick up the rock and fucking throw that shit. Sure, ask the big dragon for, to do his stuff. Well, he's the, the closest one to me right now. I'm on top of him. So, oh. Drek Derry? Okay, there you go. You instead pick up this rock and decides to throw it uh, at apparently where Stormclimb is pointing off, that is the wagon. As you do, all three of you just watch as the, fo as the rock just spins through the air uh, for a while and a ways before it hits some of the boxes atop of the wagon that are still oozing some sort of black liquid. And as they do, as it does hit the boxes, uh, you just see that the oozing suddenly stops for a moment, almost as if freezing up, before suddenly resuming. Huh. Okay. Mm. Not really what I expected. Oh, that was interesting? Question mark? Uh, no, honestly, that was probably the best outcome. Um, I guess we'll move on unless anybody I, else wants to try throwing rocks uh, at no, it. No, I don't think that's maybe a good idea. Maybe we should just go and get out of here while we still can. Yep, agreed. Out of here. And so we do. Well, we're gonna move through the... Through? Yeah, we're gonna move through the fields just outside the the, the city walls and towards the our exit point so the three of you uh, still sort of like uh, trailing the walls to the to the outside you make your way over to the to the other path and once you are there you start following it westwards until you are uh, closer to the sacred grove almost within it. And you start to make your way, looking back and forth around to trees you have previously marked with uh, uh, with chalk, I believe. Yep. That is correct, and also Ander is our, now our map maker, so of course even if something happened, he'd still be able to navigate us. Fair enough. So, as you walk through those trees... Uh, looking for the trees marked with axes, uh, you're paying more attention to the trees now and a little bit more used to the whole being here than you were before. And uh, Ender and Stormclimb, what are your 
passive perceptions. Sorry, come again. Passive perception? Yes. Uh, mine is a 12. What about uh, yours? 13. Mine yeah. is also 13. All right. So I'll have the three of you make a perception check. Oh. 19. Sorry. Should I roll again or gonna take... Uh, I should roll again, right? Yeah. Just take off advantage and roll again. Uh, perception. <laughs> uh, I, I hate this because it's so unfair. I'm sorry. Yeah, it, it's not really. So, as you're going back to the cemetery in the Sacred Grove, uh, Storm Climb and Ender, the two of you seem to catch a glimpse of something shining. Uh, but you, Storm Climb, you... The glimpse you catch just lasts for a moment before Dragdaring keeps walking away and you the opportunity to see whatever that was has passed. Ender, you, however, stop for a moment and kind of squint and look at that and you notice that these uh, slight shining shine that you saw seems to be coming in from a hollowed out tree and you can see that there seems to be something on the inside of it some sort of trinketry hmm. I want to take it Alright, so you do approach the tree to fetch the trinketry from it, right? Sure. Alright. Hey, Adam, where are you going? Uh, wait, this is very important. There's what? something so cool right here. What did... No, oh, he found something Oh, great, again. so you can run off and do what shit ever, but we have to be the responsible ones. Oh, great, yeah. You were throwing rocks at whatever back down there. It was yeah, a I'd, safe I'd, distance and nobody could get hurt. I don't think we're in any, you know, good stance to be responsible. Just keep going to to the portal. Uh, uh, I'll handle it myself. <laughs> no, no, did you remember the rules? Don't ever split the party. Also, that that's is what like, Anthony said. That's like way up there on the list of famous last words. No, what have you found? I'm going to come over there and look too. Okay, so sure, take along and be my guest. So, Ender, you approach this tree that seems a smack dab in the middle of a, a, a crossroads of sort to look at uh, whatever is inside this hollowed out tree. As you look on the inside, you, f you find a few mini trinket trees. Sorry, uh, you seem to find some... Uh, Small holy symbols uh, engraved. Uh, they're made of metal, apparently silver, and immediately you recognize the symbols to be the same one that was in the church you were holding up uh, in f just a few moments ago. Mm. What's in there? You find so, ten of these little amulets, these holy symbols of Eaglebath. Oh, uh, hey guys! All this stuff from that evil guy is in here. Should we take it? The last time when you tried to take something, it was from a grave. I'm not sure how. Let's see. Oh wait, I never saw that ghost. So. We didn't see anything. Yeah. I mean, you really think it's a good idea to reach out and pull something that's just sus suspiciously put into that tree? Is it shiny at least? Is it very shiny? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. then, yes. Well, then let's just at least beat up this tree just in case it's alive. Yeah, don't worry. If you if your hand gets caught in the tree, I do have an axe. Okay. For the arm, not the tree. <laughs> I'm taking the, the, the trinkets. Or the... Yeah. Oh, you're not even going to punch it open. Nope. Uh, I'm going to go to the shiny things inside the tree. All right. Uh, so 
the two of you look with apprehension as Ender tries to reach inside the tree uh, to catch all the all the shinies. And as you look up, this tree seems a little bit odd because all the other trees seems dead. This one seems to be alive and looking uh, on the on the top of the tree, it seems to be the only one that is bearing fruits. Uh, the fruit that this tree is giving away, they are. They are sort of weird, like shriveled and com fully black, but somehow they don't give off the notion that they're rotten or anything. Uh, and you just notice that this feels odd, that this is the only one of these trees, all of these dead trees, that is still bearing fruits. I'm going to kind of keep an eye out and see if the tree's moving at all beyond the wind it, yeah, and I'm oh go ahead it only seems to be swaying with the wind and nothing above that beyond that I'm gonna use up my last divine sense and just get a feel for this thing alright so you do that storm climb before we get to what happens uh and there you find those 10 holy symbols of Vigilbeth, so you can write that down in your character sheet. You find two fl three flasks of uh, something. Two of them are alike, a sort of... Uh, some oily substancy that you're not entirely sure what it is. And one other flask seems to have a bubbling red liquid that you recognize as a potion of greater healing. Okay, greater healing, tree of oily, whatever, I don't know what it is. Uh, two flasks of oil and, well, two, o okay. oil potion, oily potion, and one uh, flask of greater healing. Okay. Am I able to successfully r remove my hand for the trees, I, I assume? Right. Yeah, you reach in, you grab all those stuff one after another and just pockets it all. Okay. Uh, so now we go to Divine Saints, or do I get a turn to speak before that? Uh, as soon as you pocket everything, Ender, what are you saying? Guys, this is gold. It looked like silver. Looks yeah, like a actually, to me. But I'm fine. It didn't even bite, beat me or anything. Alright. And uh, as soon as you say that and finish pocketing all the things, Storm Climb, you feel a noxious smell of undead nearby. And before you, you finish trying to decide where it's coming from, the all of you are caught by surprise as I speak very slowly in order to change the music because the ground breaks open and almost jumping lunging in a way you see a a undead warrior just popping out of the ground to grab at you, uh, Ender. With both of its hands, it just goes and grabs at your legs and starts pulling it itself up, using you as a uh, as support. <laughs> Famous last words. It didn't bite me. <laughs> <laughs> and as the three of you notice this creature coming right up, I will ask you guys to go ahead. I roll for initiative. <laughs> because... Uh, we almost got through this without combat. Almost. Uh, I'm so, so sorry. No, you're you not. Have no don't, idea. Apologize to, don't apologize. Don't <laughs> apologize. I am, I just went no. with the character. I am sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, uh, if it wasn't gonna be you, it was sure gonna be me. Twenty. It was yeah. definitely gonna be Drac. Hey. What the fuck? He's got a compulsion towards shiny things too. Like. <laughs> he's a yeah, problem. It definitely would have been. It definitely would have been Drac if it wasn't for if Andrew didn't do it first. <laughs> I'm so so pissed off with you, Ander. Stormclimber, you're riding Drakdari, and you see this undead foul creature just po uh, popping out of the ground, grabbing at both of Ander's legs, and starting to climb its way out of the ground, and it gets to have a turn. Before any of you do, L would you look at that? I finally get yeah, your act first. <laughs> yeah, I should have been on uh, Ander's shoulders, but I just was like, I'm... Storm climb was not having it this time. <laughs> sure. Uh, as it climbs out, uh, Ender, I imagine that you try to shake it off from you, and uh, it finishes pulling itself off, off, off of the ground. It unsheaths a long sword it has on its back and tries to strike at you with it. Ender. And that is going to miss with a nine. Yes, oh my god. Ugh, so my you're... heart just stopped for a second. <laughs> Ender, you dodge to the side uh, to completely avoid this cutting slash, but as you dodge, this creature just reaches for you and tries to grab your arm in the same spot where you were grabbed before. And this time it hits with a 21. Okay, so I am... Like... Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, hits for how how much damage? Uh, you suffer five points of necrotic damage, and I need you to make a Constitution saving throw. Oh my god! Uh, so five points, Constitution normal saving throw. Uh, I think I'm good. Okay. As as soon as the creature touches your arm, you feel this cold sensation in your skin, in your fur, and you immediately just pull off uh, and you just feel the, the scratching of this creature's nails very long uh, nails just raking at your arm as you pull it away and it hurts and stings for a little bit, but whatever this creature was trying to do you get the sense that you got away with it and that's the creature's turn next up is you, Ender, what are you doing? <laughs> I can't do much. Uh, do I want to run to the portal? How far away is the portal that we could possibly get away? Um, the portal isn't too far away. You can totally, definitely run if you would like, but it's still a run. It is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, I'm still fighting. Can I... I just move to the other side. Um, here. And right. I'm gonna attack. Quarterstaff, two-hand attack. Alright. Using your feline grace, you just kind of dance around the creature. And as you finish your, your spin and twist and such, you come off landing a quarter staff hit against the creature and as you hit it uh let me look at your character sheet real quick yeah you hit it with a 17 dealing eight points of damage uh, but as you do, you get the sense that uh, it doesn't quite damage the creature as much as you would hope. Mm. Well, he does magical damage thanks to his uh, With his item. fist. With his fist. Yeah, with my fist. That wasn't, Not his staff. Say. Oh, sorry. I thought... Uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bad idea. Gotta start with that monk So, weapon. martial arts fists? Sure. You make one punch against the creature. And it is. 
you miss with a 9 unfortunately. The creature now is wisened up to you and your moves. And after whacking it on the face with your quarter staff, you try to punch it, but it just dodges out of the way. And for a zombie, this is quite a nimble, fast one. And that's the end of your turn, I believe. Yep. Drek Daring, you see an undead coming out of the ground and striking at your friends and... Oh no, it's an undead creature! Your whole body sizes up as you notice that it's alive and it's attacking Nander. Make a wisdom saving throw. Uh. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Are we leaving it at that? No, I'm going to. I, I just wanted to look at my card real quick, and I still I keep realizing I haven't even used my DM inspiration on anything. You haven't. <laughs> I I keep forgetting. Is that advantage? Yes. On something. Okay. Yes, it gives you advantage on on okay. shenanigans. I'm gonna use this because like this is important. This is the important one. <laughs> All right, so that's a 17. You shake off the fear out of your mind, and you are not frightened of the creature. So. You can go ahead and take your turn as normal. Thank goodness. I'm going to just angrily yell and all the pent-up frustration from the last several hours of what we've been doing in here channeled into one big axe swing that we'll probably miss. Hey! Oh, that's disadvantage. Well, either way. 17... It 17 plus 2 from flanking hits. Yes. For 18 damage. 18 points of slashing damage, which is halved because. Yep. It does. I don't have silver. It's not silvered, unfortunately. Oh, great. Looks like I'm the one that's got to deal the heavy damage this time. Oh, look at you guys looking at creatures, stat blocks, and such. I'm not. The, you said you didn't deal. Look, you said it doesn't deal as much. I know it's resistances. I know. Yeah, I know I mean, it's just like gonna be physical kind of resistance, man. Sign. I expected that. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's resistant to attacks that are not that are that aren't magical or silvered. It's a running theme with the undead. Yeah. So, Drake that's Darien, that's your turn. Next up is a storm climb. Okay, I am going to, let's see, I can't do any of my extra abilities. Um, so, as a bonus action, can I do a quick look at this guy? See if, I don't know, I can uh, gauge anything from his appearance, see any weak spots? Are you trying to study him to see if there's any way you can inflict more damage to him? Um, I suppose so, but I'm using my bonus action to do the quick look. <laughs> I'm not a fan of you saying what action you're using to do that kind of stuff, but sure, I'll well, allow I mean, it. Like, that's what it's been the previous times. Sure, uh, make I a to defy an enemy. Make a religion check. I don't remember anything. It's been months since I last played D and D. Ouch! <laughs> that one. Big ouch. Dog damn, this thing is alive. It should not be. It's dead, but it's also alive. How odd. It's a zombie. You can tell oh, that okay. much. Sherlock up in yep. here. Definitely needs to uh, be redeadened again. So I'm going to just use Martini to attack, and since I have pack tactics, I get advantage. And a plus two for flanking. Correct. Oh, wait. Oh, sorry. Let me re-roll that. So, oh! Looks like that didn't matter. I just set myself up for failure. Okay. Oh, wait. Whatever. What's... So I missed, Doug? Um, I'm gonna consider that first roll you did. Because I just had to roll again. So I'm considering that 23 and that 5. So the 23 hits for 5 points of silver damage, which takes him full. Okay, and... Um, that's your action and bonus action, I'm that's your gonna, whole turn. That's... yeah, that's... 
that's pretty much it. All right. I told you, Ander. What did I say? <laughs> <laughs> Next up, the creature, the undead and the creature is going to try and attack you again, Ander. It seems drawn to you for some reason. So, um, who knows? Maybe ten holy symbols. Uh, it's going to try and strike at you with its long sword. Once again, it tries to go with a down slash at you and misses with a 14, which two weeks ago would have hit. Two yeah. games ago would have hit. Uh, next, after missing with the sword as you dodge out of the way, once again it tries to grab at you with its hands. And fails as well with a 9. Look at me, rolling awfully bad. And yeah, that's the creature's turn. Ender, you're up. Attack, attack, attack with my fist. Okay, so two fist attacks? Yeah. Oh. And normal attacks plus two. No, but we got plus two. Yeah, from yeah. flanking. Yeah. So both hit. You deal a total of uh, 13 points of damage. And I'm gonna just tell Storm Climb. They were so shiny. <laughs> so with your first punch, you just feel a very loud crack as the jaw of this zombie is completely dislocated and, it's, and one of the hinges break off and it's kind of just laying there, uh, hanging by just one of the sides of the head. And your other punch, you try to punch the creature in the chest, and you feel your monkish training just go fully in, and your and your and your fist just punches a hole through the chest of the creature, uh, breaking flesh and bone. And as you pull off, uh, you leave this big fist-shaped hole in the front of the creature, and you can see that the creature is looking very rough, but it's still alive. Well, quote unquote. Is it alive? <laughs> <laughs> or is it? <laughs> it's below half health. And that's your turn, I believe. Yeah. Alright, Drek Derry. What are you doing? A big old swing with that great axe. Go for it. <laughs> Presumably a 28 hits. Oh, it sure as heck does. For four, <laughs> four whole no, points of damage. Four whole points of damage? And frustrated as I am, I'm going to use my action surge. Okay, go for it. So that I can try and hit it again! <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> you miss with a 14. You try to slash at it, and then you pull back your axe, and you let out a mighty draconic roar as you prepare to go again. And as you go to hit the creature, you just see its head turning around, uh, just snapping, clacking against uh, against the the neck bones. Uh, the torso doesn't turn; just the head turns to look back at you, doing a full 180. Uh, and it completely throws you off, and you just, as you're about to go down, you just stop yourself and reel back from the sheer horror of seeing this creature just look at you like an owl. Uh, ah! Pretty much. <laughs> Next up is a storm climb. Okay, I'm going to let's see. Smite. I'm going to Shh, don't meta game for me <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna uh, no backseat gaming DM. I'm gonna attack again with my martini. <laughs> and, sure. Uh, uh, he's gonna say, "I hope you can handle a stiff drink because this martini's got some bite to it." And, uh, you know, it's already bloodied. I'm gonna, for the hell of it, just end it all with the Divine Smite and use up my last spell slot. Oh, you do have a Divine Smite. I thought you didn't. That's why I said the Dual Smite. I thought you were out of spell slots. Nope, still have one more. I was just waiting, but it looks like this guy doesn't have much health, and I was just trying to see if I could get a, a nat 20, but whatever. That's probably not gonna really happen anytime soon. Sure. Oh, whatever, eight. So, dealing a total of 14 points of damage, you are able to 
punch a hole at the at the skull of this creature with Martini, and then the Idolon just shows up behind, putting once again the full force of not only your divine powers but your divine might into it. And you just see this energy just flow through the skull, and as it kind of coalesces inside of it, it just bursts. And you, the skull is completely shredded into pieces, and you just see uh, small pieces of bone just flying around uh, aimlessly. And as it does, the three of you just look around as the as this undead corpse just crumples into the floor, uh, now fully dead. Oh, uh, did uh, so real quick. Does my divine? I'm pretty sure my divine sense is still active. I think, isn't it? Or did I pick up anything else from my divine style? Sp- well, divine, divine sense. Did I pick anything else up from that before the battle initiated, or was it just I really just couldn't detect where it was coming from? Uh, it seemed odd because it could detect some some evil around, but it couldn't really see, and apparently that's because it was coming from the ground. And as soon as this one crumples and dies, you get the sense that this was the last of them. The only one that was able to be outside of the city. And you have the gone down and defeated it. Yay! And now totally it's just worth the last it. of us. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 Swear I was trying to not make a Dark Souls joke this whole time. <laughs> Uh, do you guys want some shinies? You can put them in your pocket. We're leaving. Yeah. Let's go. Yes, let's, let's head back, please. <laughs> Where are you going? So, leaving these dread, drab, dreadful place behind, you start making your way back towards the, towards the sacred grove, where, once again, you find in it a several trees marked by chalk and following them uh, further and further eventually you make it to a, a small mausoleum where you have been to before you recognize it immediately by the way uh, Doug I forgot to ask before we left did we was there anything notable on this undead person like any uh, items that stuck out, or was it just like you know, a bunch of raggy clothes? Make an investigation check to retroactively loot the corpse. Okay. Walk away. Oh wait, hold on. <laughs> Seventeen. <laughs> hey, they. Ander gets to uh, set off the trap. So if I, I at least gets to do this one other stupid thing <laughs> from the undead, another undead. <laughs> no, we activated second form. <laughs> uh, not anything too interesting. The it seems to have a long sword that doesn't seem to have anything special about it. It also seems to have a long bow that, well, it never got to use. Uh, aside from that, uh, nothing really noteworthy. Sifting through the pockets of this creature, you do find yet another one of those holy symbols of eagle baths. And uh, some leftover money that apparently was buried with or somehow found its way underground with. You're not entirely sure why or how it didn't have money, but you do find in its pockets uh, the equivalent to 20 gold pieces. Okay, tossing that into the bag of holding. Uh, let's see, Drak, can you just add that for me? It takes me. Drake, can you add that for yep. me? It takes me a while to get there because I'm using um, a touchpad. Done. So the three of you then go and make your way back to the mausoleum from where you had left, and you can see as you approach the fragrant fragrant aroma of this of the incense I had put before to keep away these creatures it's still burning and the your 
land in place here. Return to the material wor world is still safe and sound. Cool. So, oh, Ander, did you finish compiling everything together on your map and the the, the book you were supposed to write? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'll just save the details for later, but yeah, I got the 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 sketch is done. Okay. Do you think we should make a copy just in case? Cuz like we'll be handing this handing this over to Anthony and you know, we're kind of not really sure where we stand with this guy. Yeah, I guess so. We'll do that on the other side. Drac is already in the process of ripping open the sarcophagus again. Sure. <laughs> oh, okay, guess we'll head back inside. So, Drac Daring, you're already pulling open this the, the, the big old sarcophagus that is laying there and getting ready to get inside as uh, Ender and Stormclimb discuss the particularities of the loot. And I imagine everyone now follows suit to get into the sarcophagus again. Tetris mode activate. Yep. <laughs> get <laughs> in <laughs> here. <laughs> so, whereas at first it was pretty awkward and somewhat uh, weird in, in general to get inside the sarcophagus for the first time because of the whole, like, ridiculousness of the situation now getting inside the sarcophagus almost seems like a relief you look at it as a sign uh, as a sign as in a symbol that you're close to getting back home and with eagerness you all climb into it getting ready to return home were you gonna say something storm climb um, I don't think so. No, I was just, uh, I guess. No, I lost my train of thought. Go ahead. <laughs> sure. So all of you climb into it and, uh, direct daring using, uh, your hands, uh, as cramped as it is, you can't very well move. Uh, you're all sort of like twisted and, and spun around on the inside to try and fit and still, Make enough room for Ender, who does not seem to have as much trouble fitting into it, and Storm Climb just sort of can find space, plenty of it, on the inside. Uh, I guess I lost some weight <laughs> from all this running and fighting. Yeah, well, it's that's you know it, it that's what happens when you're under stress. And the three of you make your way inside and direct daring. You pull over the lid to close the sarcophagus. And as you do, you count to ten, just like you did the previous time around. Five. Seven. Nine. Eight. Yeah, that's about to... Okay, slide it back open. And as you do, <laughs> slide it back open, and you look out on... Uh, you look on the outside, Everything feels and looks the same. You pull over the lid and you're still inside a mausoleum. Uh, what about the scent? The smells seems different. Seems like okay, we yeah, let's just have a look outside and see if the trees are moving or something like that. Yeah, it's a good idea. Can I? Uh, I think I'm stuck. I'll check that. So uh, Ender just checks if it, it looks like uh, grass and regular dirty and regular trees. And you know. So Ender, as you climb out of the sarcophagus, uh, while Drek Daring is still trying to pull himself out of it. Uh, for a moment you're almost worried that he might have gotten stuck in there, but you perish the thought to go outside and check, and as you open the door, the outside looks normal. You see that everything is green once again, the trees are in there, uh, you feel 
uh, a chilly night air uh, passing through you, but it's the familiar chilly air of a summer night and not the one of the Shadowfell. And as you look around, you realize that you have returned to redemption. Late at night, but you're back in the material plane. First thing, take a deep, 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 deep breath. And hey, guys, we did it. <sighs> Meanwhile, I'm helping Drac out, Help. or at least Get I'm trying out. to. Okay. <laughs> just, just, uh. just, come on, just move this way. Come on. Uh, and I, I guess can't. I'll try to see if I can activate my power to try and pull him out. <laughs> just, uh, come on. <laughs> Why do you weigh so much? Uh, not a good question right now. Okay. Whoa. Hey. Whoa. We should really well, buy some grease to oil your weapon so that you'd have an easier time squeezing through stuff. It's not a bad idea, actually. Yeah, we'll, we'll do uh, that. Could have you used one of those weird potions? I don't think we want to be pouring <laughs> Stop, things what? from Shadowfell <laughs> onto my body. Thanks and good. Wow, it's beautiful out. And it's not like terrifying great i'm going to sit down for a little bit i'm gonna go find a tree stump off to the side and just sit let's hug a tree so <laughs> all all three of you walk outside and as you do the verdantness of the sacred grove hits you all at once and for the first time in what feels like forever you can actually hear some birds chirping and crickets chirping and nature sounds are back and you breathe with relief knowing that you're back home and no longer in that awful horrible dead place i scream i scream really loud just like let off just ah! sorry i just i've been holding that in like the whole time relatable but drag is just like thousand yards staring into the into the ground <laughs> At the moment, <laughs> just like trying I to control it. his breathing. <laughs> this is any this is any time, any good as any time to check what we got from the grave robbing. So I want to know what I find inside that uh, pouch that I got from the grave that I never opened. So. Ender, as you open up the pouch, you do find the equivalent of a, a 120 gold pieces. Oh! Judging. And on top of that, you also find a journal. Oh! Nice! Do you read it? Yes! As soon as you start flipping through pages, you notice that this is a the diary of some previous party who has been sent into the Shadowfell to investigate it. Uh, Leilin, the Cephidine, and Taunt, the male dwarf, and Gata, the tiefling, who were sent here to with a similar objective as you. They they write about how they came over here, well, over there, how they came to the Shadowfell with a, with an objective of scouting the land and trying to find uh, more secrets and treasures. And how the how their how their travel went, the pitfalls they found, the dangers they faced. The steps they, tru they, they took to try and steer clear, uh, how they were keeping some of the incense with them and a sensor they brought in themselves to ward off the undead as they walked around and how eventually they ran out of incense. And on their way back, how they this is the last passage on the journal, which just reads, We missed the deadline. We're stranded. We'll try our luck in the city of graves. You'll come to perdition. Oh. And it the is city of perdition. It is signed off a month ago. The date that is signed in it. 
Does that match with whatever Anthony told us before? Oh, he didn't at all. Yeah. He did tell you that he sent them a while ago. And uh, they never returned. Apparently, the last entry they had is from uh, uh, roughly a month ago. That What's they... the time span between the first and the last entry? How many, how many times they were there? Were they there? A couple days. No. Couple days. Yep. Apparently they decided to rest over there, and that caused them to miss the deadline, and therefore they were stranded. Careful. Yeah, I'm assuming I just read it out loud for everyone, right? Yeah. Um. Okay. Wow, I mean, the, they were stuck there for days. How far did they Sounds even awful. go? They probably got <laughs> killed. Yeah, not so far. It looks we found all of them. Yeah, but I mean, like, how do you get stuck there for days when you have any? When we were, we were able to go in uh, all the places that were mentioned in that diary, and. Like, they still somehow missed the mark. They didn't stay at the site, at, at that mausoleum for some reason. Like, that's just weird. My best guess is that they went for more shinies than us. So you think that perhaps they right. got caught up with the shinies and maybe the illusions that the hallucinations? Probably. Because someone went crazy. Someone was eaten. And the other one had 120 gold pieces. Uh, that sounds about right. <laughs> By the way, do we still have that flesh fan with us? I mean, <laughs> we would have probably dropped it mid the mindful. <laughs> I mean, like, sprinting. I kind of thought you would have, like, I don't know, brought it, thrown it into the bag of holding or something. Nope. I wasn't really sure. <laughs> Didn't know. Uh... It's somewhere on the other side. Uh, I want to like show everyone. Back, so that's okay. <laughs> Sorry, I All just right. want to show Sorry. everyone the symbols I found. I found on the tree. Never got the chance. So and the um, pockets the the holy symbols and show, like yeah, this look like nice pieces. What should we should we do with this? Sell. Uh, turn it in. Turn it over to Anthony. Obviously, everything we found. I mean, do we really want that object? Uh, seem to attract the undead. Do we really want to put that into the market? Nope. And have it circulate to God knows where. Nope. We need to take everything mm. we found to the guild. Are we gonna get paid to hunt the undead later? I bet Maybe. we would. Double profit. <laughs> but we don't know if. Uh, for all we know, the items that we have are very cursed. Yeah, I agree. Uh, just kidding, guys. Uh, yeah, just kidding. Of course. Right. <laughs> I look at Andrew uh, just to see if he actually meant that. <laughs> <laughs> Make an inside check. Uh, just kidding. I also find these two weird liquids. Have you seen this before? And I showed the oily potion. The body lotion. <laughs> I'm not an alchemist. Uh, I, mean, I guess I'll take a look. You can make an arcana check to try and find out what, what it is. Everyone? Everyone. Everyone. No, that's going to end real well for me. 11. Okay, well, 16 then. <laughs> it ended well for you. How is it that Ander always scores so low when it comes to intelligence? How is it I, I don't know. How is it I roll ones on the group. So, <laughs> Dracterian, you look at this potion, you kind of uh, wetten you, one of your fingers in it, uh, more so kind of just dipping like a, a single drop of the potion into your finger because it can't really well fit into, into the bottle itself. And you give it a taste, a little lick, just to feel the taste of what it is. And although it doesn't really quite gives you that big of an inkling of clue of what it is, 
uh, it feels very familiar. You get the sense that you have seen people using this before, back when you were a mercenary. This is. Uh, you get the sense that this oil uh, could make one a little bit more slippery. Yep. So he just tasted lube. <laughs> oil. That's definitely oil. Mm. And you get the sense that this might be something people refer to as true oil of slipperiness. I bet we can find uses for this. Was it really smart to taste it like that? Once again, I we don't know if it's cursed that we really should have we really should have brought it to Anthony. I spat yeah. it out, it's fine. Uh, sure. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. Did someone add 120G to the bag of holding? Can I I'll do that do now? That. I'll do, I that do that right that. now. Oh, okay. Thanks. Um, what else? Thing? There's nothing else, I guess. That's I the, think all we the need to go. That javelin, let's, the let's go talk to Anthony right yep. now. If you're I, feeling I'll, okay, Drek. I, I pull out the arm corpse and say, yeah, let's go talk to Anthony. Uh, oh, and I put it back in. So, uh, <laughs> sorry, I just had that's to That's so disrespectful. <laughs> I'm sorry. And I Storm feel a little time. ashamed because I was just trying to <laughs> lighten up the group. <laughs> let's go report in. And then I, I think I need to have a bit of thinking for myself. So all let's just finish this. All three of you then make your way back to the guild, uh, walking alone, and this you're you're in the woods late at night. It's very dark, uh, and you make your way over there. But still, after what you have just been through, traversing the sacred grove and making your way, your way back to the adventurers guild feels almost like a breeze and quickly enough you find yourselves back in the god slayers guild uh talking to anthony and unleashing all the things you have found to him by the way i might be forgetting this but did you find a oh, yes you did sorry never mind Yes, we found that and the broken necklace, stone cube and the, the necklace. Cube. You make your way Basically back. Basically lay everything out we found. <laughs> uh, you see Anthony, who's just watch, uh, watching over all the things you find. And he just looks at them and says, Well, this is quite a good hole. I was not expecting you to go for extra credit or anything in fact i was half expecting you to return as soon as you set foot over there and saw what the shadow fell is like it takes hmm. heart to find recruits to be a recruit a adventurer of the guild who can withstand the horrors of that land i commend you well thank you we made sure to exercise caution with this world. We, even though we are very strong, it's we did we didn't let our egos get ahead of us. At least it's not not this time. I, tomorrow, once when my magic comes back, I'll be I can give you a more I can provide an illusion that will help give you a better, more clear image of how the Shadowfell looks like, if that's of any help. Yeah, and also I'll provide you copies, uh, copies of the map and lay of the land tomorrow also. Well, that would be helpful. So let's look at all those things you brought. And he takes you guys over to a sort of a... to another room, another office, where you meet uh, an enchantress. That seems to be taking care of all this, uh, well, all the things we're bringing to back into the guild. She seems to be um,
so it's pretty sure like it's like around midnight so it's technically a morning hello can i be heard yeah yes wow uh my internet just went down uh where oh, did it cut weird. off um, Hi, you were giving us free the coffee? enchantress <laughs> the enchantress all right <laughs> Yeah, all right. I, I see what is your game now. Hey, it's yeah, like Sometimes I said, it's trying a to late score that, night, that so I was asking free, for coffee. Like instant coffee they serve in the hotel <clears throat> lobby at all times of the day. Yeah, I sure. Mean, it's very late, and we're all very strung out. <clears throat> so it's like if we're going to be able to pay attention, I figured <clears throat> we might as well ask for some coffee. And we'll coffee take exists notes. in this world. So we'll he take notes, and I'll read them later. He he brings you into <laughs> he brings in, you into a side office. Where these, uh, where this halfling woman, uh, the enchantress, is taking care of all these things you have brought in. She seems to be called uh, Mrs. Pidea. I suppose you might want the... I'm not even going to try. All right. <laughs> yeah. gonna... Well, I mean, like, go ahead and tell us about Mrs. Please, Pidea. please, please type... Day. Please type her name, but like I'm not even going to guess that one. B. Fingy. Yeah, no. <laughs> so Mrs. Pitea, she starts looking over the items that you have brought back, uh, alongside with Anthony, of course. <clears throat> uh, sorry, uh, just asking. Anthony did not seem impressed by uh, the time that we spent there. I mean, he did, but uh, I assume there's no time-passing discrepancy between the two realms? No. The same time okay. seems to have passed for for you guys over there as for the people over here. In fact, you do return and it's like 2, 1, 2 in the morning. Something along okay. those lines. Yep, see, it's, it's still appropriate to have some morning coffee, because it's technically morning. So, looking over all the things you, you brought back, they do truly identify those holy symbols that you have as, uh, well, holy symbols. There doesn't seem to be anything weird with them, outside from the fact that you imagine it was a memento from worshippers of Egobath that may have relinquished this for a reason or another. Regardless, they are still worth something to true worshippers of Eagle Bath. And they are willing to pay you 25 gold pieces for each. 30! Mm. The... Uh, Anthony, he just looks at you, Stormclimb, and says... 25, and that's final. Give me some coffee and we'll be. Give me some coffee and we'll be cool. Coffee will be provided as soon as we finish going through what you have brought to the guild. Fine. Then he identified. Well, at uh, the enchantress, who seems to be called uh, Adnis, she identifies the two oils of slipperiness correctly. A potion of greater healing. Uh, the journal you brought, uh, actually, Anthony, looking through the journal, he says, Hmm, there are several passages here who, well, that talk of other places in the Shadowfell. This trio, they were sent in as a scouting party to not only try and retrieve this treasure, but also discover new places. This information they are bringing back, albeit incomplete, already gives us some inkling of clues as to what is out there. And this will help us map out the Shadowfell. This is a, a good find. Thanks for bringing that back. I suppose that makes us the scouting team now, huh? Mayhaps. Well, regardless. Uh, 
they identify the uh, the silk tabard that you have found uh, as a non-magical item, but the craftsmanship is amazing, almost impeccable, and it's worth uh, it's shredded with gold and such, so it's worth 250 gold pieces. Or one of us could wear it and look dope. Yeah, you could. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, let's see if we can just let's see if we can sell that to somebody else. Kind of <laughs> tempted, honestly. It looks great. What are they? What like? What what are the what's the color scheme of it? Uh, I probably described it on the last session. It's been a few weeks. <laughs> I don't remember. All we know is that I'll it's look back. beautiful and Throw it's back got Tuesday. gold. And got like gold sewn on it, His... or something like that, on the on the rims. Yeah, I probably so, described it. I wrote it... it down in the wiki. <laughs> All right, I probably described it as uh, being hello? black and red. And hello, hello. hello. Sorry, go on. Is everything alright? Audio wise. Sorry, ev everything just like cut out for a second. Oh. I'm the only one that I didn't experience this. Weird. In any case, the I probably described it as being red. I mean, black with red inlays here and there. Uh, and, well, black with red accents and treaded with gold. Uh, red and gold accents here and there. Drax Shiny Brain is going, yeah, I kind of want that right now. And just is going to... Just put it back in the bag of holding. Sure. Keep it now. Who knows? It might be useful or super yeah. dope to have. Uh, they identified the, uh, the javelin that you found as a javelin of lightning. Damn it. Nice. And as they look at it, uh, Adnes, she just looks up at Anthony and says, Well, this does not look scarce or anything. Doesn't seem to have anything bad with it, so... I suppose that he can have it. And Anthony just looks at the three of you and says, Well, these indeed you can have. I imagine it'll be more useful to you out there in the field than me in an office, so have at you. And he gives you the Javelin of Lightning, par properly identified now. Thank you. Maybe you should hold on to it, Drek. That seems like her thing since you shoot lightning. I could do that. There was also a uh, another cloak we found. The cloak, as they look into it, it seems to be robe of wings of flying. In short, this robe turns into bat wings and you can use it to fly around. I love it. <laughs> That's cool. Does it have like the Batman cowl ish thing going on? <laughs> Not quite, but uh, Anthony he picks it up and says, "Huh? Do you do you think we could use this one then for our endeavor?" And Adnus she looks up at him and says, "Well, yeah, we might be able to disenchant it and transfer the enchantment into something bigger, more powerful to transport more people." in and out of the house. And Anthony just nods. Well, it seems like this is the magical item you were trying to find. Give us some opportunity to fly out of the hills if we ever send someone down there. Wait, how would that even work? A flying out of hell? I mean, like, it's the only way to get to hell is a portal, so how would that even work? Well, there are intricacies that you're not re yet ready to know. Not because... Okay. Not because I don't want to tell you per se, but because I don't want you to know the way to the hells and find yourselves going there. Trying to prove yourselves like some have done before. If you don't know the way in, you're gonna be safer. What was that? Okay. Uh, that cube that we found. 
Did we already go over that? The no, cube? Yet, but... You oh. did not. Yeah, but we're, we got to debate whether we're giving up the, bat of, the cloak of bat wings. Uh, uh, you... Sounds more useful to them. You can't yeah. really have it. That's yeah. the that's the thing you were sent to find. That's the thing that the guild needs. Really? I thought it was the cube. <laughs> it was the one that was in the death grip of the corpse arm tiefling. That reminds me, I need to pull out the necklace <laughs> of the corpse arm. <laughs> oh yeah, we um we found mm. as much as we could of the uh, other party. So the as you present the cube to them uh, it was a uh, s what s6 Six. moonstone cube all right so as soon as you give it to them and anthony just looks at the cube he's not super sure what it is he passes it on to agnes and she has has a gander at it examining it with her magical apparatus it's joker <laughs> <laughs> She looks at the cube and she's like, Oh no. This is horrifying. Well, we'll keep on to this as well. Um, you want to tell us what it is? Well, uh, these are. This is a Shadorium. It's a. Uh, foul object enchanted with dark magic it can explode in an explosion of necrotic energy and it's definitely volatile and not good to whoever is caught victim to this in any case this is not only it's not only bad for its effect, but also bad for its origin. You, it should, you just cannot have it. Okay. Um, At this point, I'm so, totally okay with that. What about the teeth? Uh, Drac, the, the, the teeth you managed to gather? Oh, yeah, so we fought like this frog thing in there and I got some of its teeth because I wanted a trophy. I don't know, you can have a look at them, I guess, see if there's any weird properties. I figured they were just teeth. Uh, as Anthony looks over at them, he just says, Well, it's definitely impressive to have teeth from all manner of creatures. I knew, I know a person who is very fond of collecting teeth. Well, in any case, they... I don't think we have any use for them, and or value even, but it's a nice memento of your fights and your accomplishments. Hang on to them, they might do you good. Sounds good to me. I, I think I need something to remember that by. And these are a good, this will be a good trophy. Well, in any case... I know that... Agnes here is too coy to tell you about these... Shadoriums and the Cypheriums in general, but... As part of the guild, we have to let you know... These crystals... Well, not necessarily crystals, but little trinkets... They are foul, and if you ever come across any other of them, just return them to the guild. Okay. These items, they should not be allowed to exist. They contain souls of mortal creatures trapped within them that evil fell creatures are using to enchant magical items or power enchantments and transition transitory magics it's definitely well 
not a good thing to have um, evil hands or uncontrolled hands. So, out of curiosity, the souls that are put into these crystals, um, do these, are, is it mortal souls that have power, or could it just be anybody, like, say, I don't know, a child? Well, I don't quite know. I just know that these are souls of mortals. Whoever makes these trinkets... They are in the very depths of the hells and Shadowfell and the Feywild. We don't know the intricacies, we just know that they sacrifice mortals and trap their souls and use it to fuel their magic. Well, it's definitely terrible. I have no use for such evilness. So, I'll be sure to turn over any crystals I find. Uh, right, guys? Did I look at them and try to see if they got any? They got any greedy eyes? Uh, greedy yeah, thoughts? Yeah, I have no interest in even touching something like that ever again. Nope, 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 nope. We're turning in every single one of them. Yeah, if it can't really help us, we're just more interested in getting cash. So, yep. Yeah. Go ahead and take it. Oh, fair enough. We will we'll definitely be thankful for you returning these. I'll just have you know. Individuals in town, they are using these to power enchantments. And they are willing to trade these for big amounts of money with no discretion as to what it once was so what do you need us to arrest them not quite but do not no? do not contribute to their trade if you find more of these bring them here that's all we ask Okay, not I a problem. I think we can manage that. Yep. If anything, it seems like we do great on these scouting missions as well, so let us know if you need us to do any more uh, uh, any more scouting missions. That way, you know, we can make sure that the next people who have to go in there to retrieve something or fight a big boss, they'll have better intel. Especially since we got Ander here, who's our map maker. And I point over to Ander. Oh, fair enough. Oh, um, keep the entries of this journal in mind we'll try and do our best to explore them and see what they do and what new information we can retrieve from them and once we have something new we'll let you know thank you for a good service provided to the town of redemption and I'm terribly truly sorry that we need to send you into these foul places, but it's a dire necessity. We would not be sending you over there if we could do these otherwise. And for that, you have our utmost thing. In any case, I'll study this and see what we can come up with. Whenever we are ready to send you on another endeavor, we'll let you know. Okay. We appreciate it. Um, I'm. Yeah. I'm going to go. I I'm just going. I'm going to go. Bed. Well, I'm going to well, go. Let's get a shower first. <laughs> Drac just walks away from the party out toward the back, where he went the other night. All right. So. So do we? Do we get any gold from this commission complete, or was it just from whatever we looted? Pretty much we made so much money off of that. Yeah, pretty much just whatever you looted. But I want more. We already have seven hundred gold. We. <laughs> I want more gold. Buy myself we more can... guns and magic items. <laughs> uh, I'll say that they do pay a 
they did say they were compensating us. <laughs> yeah, they do pay you 150 piece gold pieces per head, so 450 total. Uh, so my life was bed. worth 50 gold pieces. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, 450 gold for doing this whole endeavor and retrieving so much valuable things for the guild. We can buy... Um... Oh, who's adding the gold? I've been adding can... it over time. Okay. So, yeah. Plus for... 150. 450, yeah. Wait, 450 or 150? 450. Yeah, it's one... That's in total, but... Yeah, it's oh, okay. one... Was it, was it's, it's 50, one... Per, 50 per head? Yes, 150 per person. Okay. 150 per person? My god. I mean, we are kind of just corroborating a pile of gold in the bag of holdings. So. <laughs> it's going to immediately deplete the moment we go shopping. Don't be too happy. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's mine! So, it, uh, I will do math afterwards. So I'll do it yeah, for you. I thought it... Yeah, you you can I'll... do that later. You you have a yeah, whole. I'll do math later. You have a whole week to rewatch this episode and make sure of how much everything you guys got. In any case, as you yeah. walk out of uh, Anthony's office after being dismissed, uh, what do each of you do? Take a shower for one thing. Crashing, get... just crashing. Oh. oh, in all that dirt? Drag in is and blood? going <laughs> yep. out to sit near the trees in the moonlight and is just going to stick his axe in the ground and hang his little symbol on it and just kind of sit there and stare and just kind yeah. of shake. And I'm after my shower, or my quick... Uh, shower, I'm gonna uh, go over and find Drac and just watch over him. Uh, I said... Falls asleep. Sorry. Uh, I said crash, but I'm actually going to stay in my bedroom, finishing the map and the notes before I forget what we saw there. And then go to bed. Alright. <clears throat> yep, making those copies. So, all three of you take care of final little things just to be ready to go to bed uh, before the night is out. You, Drakdarian, you go over to the, the back of the training uh, hall. You notice eventually Stormclimb approaching you and watching you uh, sort of meditating and praying for a while before uh, before falling asleep and collapsing out of tiredness, and you, Drakdarian, you cannot help but to keep trying your best to bring your 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 mind to happier, safer places, but. On the back of your mind, there's this, there's this tiny nudging feeling that you're not done with the Shadowfell. That there's something there, something that wants you dead, and will never, ever give up until you are truly felled. And that is where we end off today's session. Drak just okay. kind of passes out head first against the hilt of his axe sitting on his knees. Yeah, and I'm just going to pass out like on top of his head or just like right next to him so I'm in close contact. Because I might something might happen while I'm uh, sleeping with him. Sure. So congratulations, you guys survived the shadow fell. <sighs> Easy peasy. Clap, clap, clap. Hope it was harrowing for you guys. Some of us are not okay. <laughs> Shadowfell featuring grave robbing and grave robbing and stuff. going insane. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry. Once when I get my uh, spell slots back, I might have something that can help. 
And destroying a but windmill. I'll be doing... But it'll be while I sleep. Yeah, we no destroyed one... a windmill. You... <laughs> was, They're never was... gonna be able to make their dead bread ever again. So <laughs> dead bread. Uh, dead bef bread. Before the, the this this session truly ends, there's two things I would like to ask. The first is for you, Drakdaring, to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, so excited! Why? Disadvantage. Here we go. Ooh. Yeah, that's a nine. You cannot shake the feeling, and you still have disadvantage on saving throws. Oh, yeah. Uh, I. Sorry. Go ahead. So, yeah, at the end of this long rest, you get to make a wisdom saving throw, you failed, so yeah, you still, you still feel this dread building up inside of you, knowing that something from the Shadowfell is trying to kill you and will not ever give up until you are dead. And that thought just gnaws at your mind, a little insidious idea that keeps just building up day after day. And lastly, all of you guys uh, are now level 5. So you do level up. Yay! Yay. Four attacks, stun strike. Yeah. Finally. Oh. Yeah, I can't wait to get my second attack. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I guess next session, when my spell slots come back, I'll be sleep casting something. <laughs> so I would like you guys to go ahead uh, uh, and already roll for your hit dice if you're rolling or if you're taking average or whatever you're doing. Uh, we can get that out of the way right now. Dice. What the heck is my hit dice as a fighter? Is it 1d10? Yes. Uh, you can I roll. should be taking average. Or take average. The average of a d10 is 6 if I'm not mistaken. I'm, very, yeah, it is. I'm very bad at the hit die roll, so. Uh, I'm, not even gonna try. I'm not even gonna try either. I'm just gonna I take a six. Roll the six on my physical dice, so it doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> six it is. Yeah, my hit die is eight, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, average I of four. I finally get level two spell slots. Yeah! I'm rolling the die. Sorry, guys. Uh, do you want to roll, or are you taking average? <laughs> I roll. It's a 3, right? Okay, 3 plus 1, that's a 4. Hit point increase. By the way... The if plus you... 1 is included? The plus 1 is not, not included, is it? It is included, yes. It is. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, how are you doing that? Are you using the character Mancer to level up? Yeah. All right. I didn't. Oh yeah, I didn't level up right now. Forget, forget it, forget it, forget it. <laughs> I'll take four when the time comes. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I would just prefer that you guys uh, do the whole leveling up right now because then, uh, if you have any doubts or anything, I can already help you. Okay, so level up character monster. Sorry. <sighs> Lucky for Next. me, fighters real easy at five. You hit more. Congratulations. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just get a second mm -hmm. attack and access to second level spells. Lucky you. After yep, I can finally summon my. I can finally summon my steed. <laughs> oh no, it's happened. <laughs> uh, mm -mm. Oh, my attack damage increases to one d six. That it does, yeah. So whenever you hit with any of your martial arts attacks, so your punches, they deal 1d6 now of uh, quote-unquote magical damage. Oh man, proficiency went up. My favorite. Everything's better now. Oh yeah, your proficiency modifier now proficiency becomes a... Proficiency three now. Becomes a plus yeah, three. I forgot about that. Yay. Which means it's uh, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're better at what you um, were already good at. Sitting at a solid plus nine on attacks now. <laughs> oh no. I get a six with persuasion. <laughs> oh no. Oh yeah. 
See, the irony is we're slowly becoming the weirdly broken team, too. You'll have to kill us faster. <laughs> I don't! <laughs> I'm I, not that broken. <laughs> I sort of don't want to because, you know... If I kill you fast enough, it, it will be such a... <laughs> so awkward. Yeah. Yeah, and we're so unique! I mean, you got, we're the mismatched Mavericks. So uniquely killable. <laughs> oh, yeah. So many ways to... I don't know. I mean, that's what Stormclimb's there to protect you. <laughs> well, well, well. Leveled up has yep, gone right. done happened. And, uh... Yeah. You guys should be doing lovelingly amazing right now super happy about being at 54 hit points really liking that oh, 54 uh, i'm a fighter i'm at 39 man. hit points i'm a fighter <laughs> it's almost double my hit points yeah monks are kind of made out of did paper did you roll for your hit points yeah i always roll for hit points no matter what i'm doing i rolled a six i have the worst my con luck. modifier which is three i have the worst luck so i just like stick with average yeah, I mean, that's really that's why you don't want to skimp on Constitution. Constitution is important, dog. Damn you guys. It matters real heavily in those levels. It really is. But as we have seen today, so is wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And in intelligence. And intelligence. Well, I mean, everything is important. You can't neglect any of those things. <laughs> But in any case, uh, yeah. should the people over at Twitch thank you guys so very much for sticking around and watching we play some Dungeons and Dragons. If you have doubts about what the hell is going on, who is what, and who the hell is Adnes, probably you can go to the wiki and check up on those NPCs and players and events and more. There's a shit ton of information over there. In case you guys don't like to watch games and just want to pick up the the slack from previous unwatched sessions and be ready to go whenever the new session shows up uh, next week. If you do, however, like to watch videos of people playing Dungeons & Dragons, for whatever reason that might be, there is also the alternative, alternative way of watching such episodes, which is called the YouTube Video On Demand, where you can uh, catch replays of all of these lovely people playing some Dungeons and Dragons and doing some dungeoneering and encountering a very low amount of dragons as it happens. However, uh, these games have just begun. We're still on episode 7 for these teams. There are three teams, so that's a shitload of episodes, but still, the games are still in the very beginning, so now's the prime time for you to go and start catching up on D&D and Conquerors of Nolan. Other than that, thank you guys so very much for watching and sticking around. Hope you guys have an amazing evening slash night slash morning, depending on where you are. Uh, not afternoon though, because if you have your if it's afternoon for you, you're probably working and not paying attention to this. In any case, I'll be seeing you guys next time. Stay awesome and bye bye Twitch people. Bye Twitch. Bye, Twitch. <laughs>